Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> I probably sound like shit right now. I'm in my garage getting stoned. <laughs> it's not terrible. I'm on my... But you're not, as, I'll just hang not out. as good as you. No, it's Chris. I'll just hang out here for a few and then transition. I got my kid, so... Transition <laughs> is key. Yeah, I uh, started hitting the sauce. Yeah, Literally. baby. 100 episodes, come on. Mm-hmm. 100 episodes only come around, what, like every 10 or 12 episodes. You know what's funny is uh, I believe my biggest inspiration for wanting to do this podcast was um, Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith starting Hollywood Babylon. That's right. And uh, they just just now, because they kind of shut down during COVID, just now they just recorded their 400th episode. So we fucking wow. beat him. Wow. Yeah. 450 if you count uh, all the Tales from the Space Pod episodes. And I know we do. It's funny. I uh, When I tell people about the podcast, because I have, strangely, I, I it's on my fucking Facebook feed eternally, but there will be people that are like, you do a podcast? I know. I'm like, yeah, like 10 years now, 400 episodes plus. And they're like, wow, you must be famous. And I'm like, well, <laughs> Boy, you would think. Uh-huh. No, longest running, least successful podcast of all time. Yeah, it, it does sound like, well, who who in their right mind would put out 450 episodes, 12 people listening. But uh, no, we have, we still have a, a couple thousand loyal listeners. But that doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't, I almost did a game where you guys had to guess the most popular or most downloaded episode of how bizarre our own round of elimination. But ultimately I thought, well, it's not, it's not that fun. (laughs) It's kind of fun for us, but uh, you know which one one from how bizarre. Mm -hmm. Oh, from how bizarre. Oh no, I wouldn't know. See what I I was going to have to send you guys like the, the first or the top 20. And then uh, we would sort of wean down. Uh, <laughs> words are already getting tough. We would trim it down to the top 10. Uh, as I said, it just ended up not being that great. And I got a little carried away with my uh, grim and pleasant. I thought, <clears throat> you know, numbers are arbitrary, of course, and only we really care about the the landmark numbers. But it did seem fitting to do something at least a little special. So I thought that we would go a little more back to our roots. We were never like a full-on true crime podcast, but that's how it started in the earlier days. Uh, it was very heavily true crime. So I'm going to do uh, something in that camp, but I'll explain more about that the later we go. And yeah, I, I posted something on my personal Facebook page. I probably have 20 or so people that are friends or family members that if they if they don't continue to listen to it, they listened to the show over the years. They're familiar with it. The overwhelming, I mean, that I know of, the overwhelming majority of my friends, uh, even on Facebook, don't. Yeah, they're like, I wonder what that podcast's all about. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of glad for that. Kind of baffled by it yeah, too, same. because it's like I always think. I, I and I have a few friends that are doing a podcast and doing some things, but. Most of them are just kind of, they're fairly, um, what's the word? Was he watching? <laughs> well, they just don't, they don't go, Never yeah, they don't off, they don't go off the rails or either like local news or they review a book. You know, they, they, they don't, oh, they don't go say, insane like we do, uh, say, it's, no. but you don't know until you, until you listen. There's a lot of people that still don't listen to podcasts, man. Yeah. Yeah, not it's funny. Just, like not a thing. It's weird. It's just like, oh, podcast. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. I don't know. When you uh, posted that on <laughs> Facebook, when you said a uh, hundredth episode, I was gonna get on there and say, uh, for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because we did it. Uh, Jesus, how many episodes do we have for? Uh, 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 oh yeah, you might not have been dialed in right when I was saying that. But four hundred and fifty total. Oh Three, man, three fifty. So uh, we we went out. Tales from the Space Pod. We ended. Um, on 350 and yeah picked it back up oh the life that we've lived oh the places we never went right <laughs> the saddest <laughs> of all dr seuss book how oh, we the wrote things that you never road. did uh-huh. up river and never really got it <laughs> i was podcast so much i didn't have the time to become traveled nor educated so, that's right uh, but we exactly. certainly talked about it <laughs> certainly learned yeah. a lot of, well i'm educated on eddie money uh on that much mm-hmm. and a little bit of squares in nature 
Yeah, can't know. But other than that, yeah, everything else we've learned, I've forgotten over the years. Drank it away. Um, there's a reason that we don't get drunk in school. <laughs> like, wait, what, what, what did I learn last year? Although I was stone cold sober in school, and that's how I felt learning stuff. Right. It was hard. Anyway, happy uh, 100th, y'all. And uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, following us over these years. It, uh, it, you know, we tease about being <laughs> unsuccessful. And I think uh, most podcasts that have been around as long as we certainly would have uh, maybe dabbled, at least, not just by nature of being around that long, but you know like i said to keep it keeping it going would have been based on more success than we've had but we've had so much fucking fun we've had so many wacky adventures we have met so many kooky people because in spite of me not again not that i know it because i will occasionally talk to somebody and i'll be like yeah i do a podcast and they'll be like oh yeah i know i've been listening for seven years i'm like what (laughs) that actually happens quite a bit so there's people listening that i don't know of but in spite of me not knowing about a lot of my friends listening, I have made, and I know you guys have made quite a few friends uh, because of the podcast. They found us, and started listening, and either they were local or they came to Comic Con when we were at a booth, or they came to one of the events, and still continue to do so. And I consider you know, also, those people friends. One hundred percent. And also, I've had I've had experiences where like friends will start listening to podcast and then I become closer with them because they're following my life at this weird, like it's forced yeah. upon them almost. Yeah. And then they'll start be- reaching out to me to start engaging about things. This is either show related or not. Mm-hmm. And because of the podcast, it's just another uh, avenue of keeping connected with people. It's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, and I think it's a, it's a great staple for who we are, where we are right now. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. That's the thing, is it? Chris, it has... we're all going to be, like, we got to, like, not tell your kid about any of this <laughs> until he's, like, 18. That'll be an incredible then, diary oh, for him to dis- discover. You know, the... When he's of age, of course. Been... <laughs> Nine. Well, but it's going to be I, awesome. I, Think about it. I'm like, I'm going to discover this when I'm dead and be like, I'm going to learn about it. <laughs> like, womp, womp. I can't even imagine. The, the, we have been so open and honest to a fall to some degree. And I'm sure that's been a big part of why we haven't grown past, uh, you know, the little niche world that we've carved out is, you know, when you tune into a podcast, that's oh, this is about serial killers. Can't wait. And then 30 minutes of talking about, Oh, I had this hemorrhoid issue. You guys got to hear what happened with my experience about the hemorrhoid or talking about our divorce or whatever. You know, most people don't give a shit. Um, but yeah, it it has absolutely been a mile marker of wherever we were in life, including our level of maturity. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, if you go back and listen to older episodes, yeah. a lot of growth. Lot I, I have some of that talk I want to tell you about right now, but it's just I don't want to eat up ten minutes of uh, time talking about my balls. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, save it for the next show. That sounds okay. like an episode one hundred and one. Topic of conversation, but I did take to uh, Facebook, our How Bizarre Facebook page last week, and I asked um, for you all to weigh in on what your favorite parts of How Bizarre has been, and maybe some of your most cringeworthy moments, something that sticks out. Didn't have to be something, you know, I didn't want it to necessarily be, tell us how great we are. I wanted to leave it open for something that you're like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty gentle, but we got some. Please suck my dick. <laughs> Say it again, Chris. Please suck our dicks as well as you can. <laughs> yeah, zip. Here's our wieners. Do be gentle. Uh, so Luke said, favorite part has to be Lyle and his triple points. Do we get one of those? Let's let's do it. I mean, he he cued you. Triple points. Ooh, boop, 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 boop. Ow, I had a little stutter down. So he's good. Has me, he goes on to say, has me pissing myself every time. Oh, and looking forward to the 9 11 episode. Much kudos from Australia. Keep up the great work, boys. Thank you so much, Luke. Um, yeah, well, the, the ever, uh, the ever future 9 11 show. Uh, Sarah Ray Shields shares a good one. I guess mine is memorable and cringeworthy, and it wasn't so much. A moment, but I'm not sheepish to admit how I came across the podcast. I met Ron on Bumble. 
I had to swipe right because in his bio, he says he hosts a filthy podcast. <laughs> I'm pretty sure oh when I made God. that bio, it was Tales from the Space Pod. Uh, and I haven't updated anything in any of the dating apps, as far as I know, like six years. And I'd forgotten Ow. that we had met on Bumble. We still haven't met in real life. But yeah, I remember that now I remember looking back that we struck up that conversation and that's why she swiped right. And then she right. started listening immediately. And as you know, she's actually been on the show. Uh, she goes on to say, most of my time at work was filled with podcasts and my maturity level and humor is that of a 15 year old boy. So I was like, cool, why not? We matched and chatted a bit and pretty sure I hounded him for deets about how bizarre <laughs> prom promptly. Uh, the newest episode at the time was Dating Horrors, and the first line in the description was, we talk about some horrific adventures in the dating app world. <laughs> should, <laughs> I, should I have taken that as a sign? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> hey, that's when the stars align, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's something aligning. Ready something in the air here. She says, probably, but I'm glad I didn't. I've come to love you four goofballs and look forward to hearing wacky tales and sharing more jizz math for use <laughs> more jizz, uh, jizz man. Man, that that she the shared jizz man. she shared one of uh the stories that christopher used for i think it was the salmon like how much <laughs> what, what was the question something like how much does oh, salmon jizz no. weigh or something right was it that one or was it the how many megabytes per semen <laughs> i can't remember oh there you go that's right there's been so many to choose from yeah oh maybe yeah anyway cheers uh -huh. to many more episodes Rounds of weird triv, echoey sound effects, and John Mark eye rolls. Inside. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, I love that you can hear my eye rolls through the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, use some Visine, uh -oh. would you? <laughs> <laughs> Shelby well, says, different. I'm, I'm stuck <laughs> on Lyle's fabulous attempts at tri 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 triple points. Going to have to give us another one. Aren't we all? Oh, God. Lyle gets a lot it. of love here. <laughs> and she goes on to say, Christopher's new jingle. Thank you for that, Shelby. Glad you've been digging that. Katie Surgery Jeff says, my favorite episodes are always around the campfire episodes around Halloween. Yeah, mm. those are our favorites too. Pretty sure it was one of those that was my first Tales from the Space Pod episode. Yeah, we look forward to that coming up soonish. It's not too far around the corner. I'm Thank really God. glad that we actually kind of carried some things over from the old podcast to the new. Yeah, one. we carried quite a like bit. Mm -hmm. Such like that. Yeah, yeah. It's we had a... sort of dialed it in by the time we ended, and when we restarted it, I we mixed some things up, but uh, that wasn't really exciting anybody. And ultimately, it was more work than what it was worth. So we kind of just eased back into where Space Pod was when it ended. To be honest. Enough. It feels to me like we touched on everything you could ever think of. Like pretty paranormal. much in one way or another. Yeah. You know, even if not in depth, it came up. <laughs> uh, Steven says, I like the songs, especially the outro. I can't possibly put a favorite or most memorable because it's all so good. I got turned on to y'all by a coworker years ago and have been hooked ever since. The most memorable thing I remember, though, is from Tales and thus doesn't really work for what you're asking uh, here. But you all did an April Fool's edition and joked about <laughs> yeah. ending the podcast. That was, that was genius. <laughs> he says, I, li <laughs> I literally threw my phone while driving. Uh, uh, we played it, it off so fucking we, we, <laughs> we really been we, working to yeah, that. We did it. We did it well. Uh, 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 he goes on to say, only have only to have y'all chime in with April Fool's. Anyway, love you guys and keep it up. Thank you, Steve. It's just funny. It's like, I remember doing that and thinking in the back of my mind as we were kind of like angrily saying goodbye, like, we just can't do this anymore, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Thinking, are some of us perhaps acting out our <laughs> fantasies? <laughs> you know what? It felt so good to say it. It's not a joke. <laughs> April Fool's is on you guys. <laughs> no, no, the show's over. Uh, well, we talked many times. I, I know I talked many times about quitting. Uh, yeah, because we, had, it was... we had some stressed times and moments where it was just like, this is just fucking too much. And this that, is, and that, yeah, it makes it seem like it. This is work. <laughs> well, it was, it certainly was back then. It's easy now. But back then, you know, I did a lot of fucking research um, for even the silliest shows. Uh, even tonight, you know, you got to round stuff up. But it, it's nothing like when I was doing the big soup de jour. So it, it, it got easy and it had to get easy for it to continue. 
Uh, and finally, Keeley says, um, I very often think of and envision the Lot Lizards episode. You remember the uh, dark side of trucking? That was one of the earlier ones. Um, I, I, I can't drive past a truck stop without thinking about Lot know, Lizards now. I know. Yeah, she goes on to say, because I can't help but crack myself up imagining a bunch of anamorphic amphibians in lingerie shacking up <laughs> in some trucker dwellings, followed oh. by serial murdering. That's exactly um, what it is. Someone should it's really like, <laughs> literalize lot lizards. Uh, it's now like, I want to see that. Do you remember those anamorphs, for, uh, the books for kids where it showed like a kid <laughs> changing into a cat? I just want to see this yeah. hooker changing into a lizard <laughs> real bad. It's like a Quentin Tarantino movie, man. But, <laughs> yeah, but like uh, with the Thundercats, like opening theme as they're transitioning. Yeah. <laughs> lizard, 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 lizard. Of lizards. There are a lot of lizards. <laughs> Oh, that would be like the, the <laughs> lost the lost episode of um remember when um was it grind that grindhouse came out where it was like mm -hmm. tarantino and oh, uh, yeah. rodriguez yeah, yeah. That, that would be something that would be in there one of those trailers like one of the fake trailers <laughs> lot lizards uh she goes on to say on the first episodes too or one of the first episodes too i laughed so much those two hours and then she did a little bit later an uh a little bit later, she did an update. Uh, this pertains to me. She says, I listen to the pod at work, and my coworker just said, as Ron was speaking, this guy right now sounds exactly like the puberty monster from Big Mouth. 1,000%. Now, Have you I not wish, seen this? I wish I'd had it queued up. I had to look it up. <laughs> but you can, it, can, yeah. it wasn't iCarly yeah. or uh, Saved by the Bell, so I wasn't abreast. But I had to look it up, and uh, frankly, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> I don't hear it myself. No, I heard I'm it fully, I heard it right away. I'm, I'm I think it's that, it's that voice. It's like when sometimes, I, you know, I have a couple different, you know, sometimes I'll get down here, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, I've heard what I have heard. <laughs> that was the first time I've heard puberty monster but i have heard is it will arnett what's the guy on uh arrested development where sometimes when he's angry he's like kind of whispering talking like that yeah I have the wrong i've, I've heard that uh, from several people <laughs> something, something michael <laughs> yes yeah, something, something, like something, something something michael uh -huh. something that's hilarious and i just thought of you know i've known wrong enough <laughs> i've known you can't spell wrong all without wrong <laughs> that i do <laughs> remember ron when he hit puberty, mm -hmm. no, uh -huh. his voice. It's, <laughs> it's pretty close. It was pretty close. It just sounds like he's you just speed up Ron's voice just a little bit. Yeah. So it sounds you get that little higher pitch and a little faster. Yeah. And that's it. Well, I think <laughs> I maybe I played this on the show at one point, but I I found a cassette tape of me when I was like seven or eight, and mm -hmm. I I always had a low voice, but it was fucking hilarious because. I don't think it changed much from eight to twelve, if I'm being honest. But it was a it was a recording of my mom. I was playing the drums. My mom was playing the guitar. Some Jesus music that she recorded for my grandma's fiftieth birthday, I think. And so you hear me do a little intro and like, "Hi, Grandma, happy birthday." I mean, it's exactly like that. I'll have, <laughs> if I haven't played it, I'll have to dig it up and play it because it's fucking hilarious. It's exactly like that, and. Uh, yeah, it it did drop, of course, but it was already low to start with. But yeah, I definitely had a it sh it shifted. Yeah, us, so us just take a dick pic. I'm uh, I'm sorry, I'm readying some stuff from today's trip. Keep going though. That's okay. Do you remember that girl I was seeing that hated your voice? I told you about that afterwards. Well, <laughs> honestly, when uh, Keely posted this comment, I was like, and I listened to it. I'm like, I could I could see how that it was probably that register that was creeping. Mm -hmm creeping this person out yeah i do remember <laughs> you don't forget <laughs> something like somebody being repulsed by your voice um, but like... yeah anyway thank you keely and thank you everybody for all that great feedback and yeah if you want to check it out uh, just look up puberty monster from big mouth um you'll hear it <laughs> it's not exact but it's definitely uh we could be siblings for certain uh, and with that, we got to keep trucking along. So I am going to leave it before I turn it over to you guys with anything you want to bring up. I get, did you see that fucking story of that dude who was swimming in a swimming pool and it just opened up like a sinkhole opened up below it and it swallowed oh. him up? 
No, but I know. I'm no, no. no. There's footage of it. There, it's like at a party. I think it, I don't remember where it was. Maybe Australia. It doesn't matter. I, I don't feel like it was the U.S., but it wasn't anywhere around Washington. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, fucking, that's fucking horrific. That's like one of the most horrifying things I've ever heard. And you not only sucked into the earth, he... I, I'm assuming that he drowned. Uh, I don't know if he was crushed or suffocated or drowned. All of them sound terrible. It probably all happened at once. Hopefully it happened quickly. And everyone the else. The answer just is like, yes. Yeah, everyone <laughs> yes. was around yeah, and just fuck. like, oh, what the fuck? I don't think people realized the dude got sucked down at first because they were like, some people were even kind of like laughing in the video. Like, oh my God, what just fucking happened? And then they later found out uh, there was a dude. Yeah, that got pulled down there, just fucking swimming in the summer heat, cooling off at a pool party, and the <laughs> earth swallowed him up. What a fucking yeah. final oh, destination way to go. Oh, well, thank you. Too. Jesus. Yeah. There was, okay, so there was a story uh, very similar to that. What it was was some type of a shed, uh, I believe, like a shop, and uh, it was a dirt floor, and it happened there. And they didn't figure it out until the, somebody came missing. And then when they came in there, it was a giant sinkhole mm-hmm. inside the area there. We have <laughs> we have sinkholes here, and we can have pretty decent ones here, but we don't. Fortunately, we don't get them like they do. Um, no, there's there's a specific type of sediment that is real. I mean, they can open up into what looks like a gateway to hell. Yeah. Um, but you may remember we had a story here locally, right in central rural Wenatchee. There was a, uh, somebody had like a little, one of those outdoor, the separate garages, you know, the ones that's not built into your house. I'm guessing this house was probably from the thirties or forties that, that part of town, you know, that's the older part of town, maybe not quite that old, but somewhere around there. Anyway, it's one of these, uh, little separate garages and somebody, the, one of the people that lived there, like went to the garage and there's this giant fucking hole and inside it was like an old Volkswagen Beetle or something. There was like oh, wow. a fucking car sitting down in there. Like the car Damn. had already fallen in. And the people that sold these people the house, or probably a couple of people, covered it over with just, I don't know, wood or some metal sheeting and just called it a day. So the whole time this thing was just a big sinkhole waiting to open back up. And then it did, and it revealed that you know this had happened again a long time ago. That's like that's like it. lazy, like real lazy. Could well, you and imagine fucking like a, thoughtless? Could you could you imagine being like a, like seeing a serial killer that was that lazy? You just like kill somebody and then throw a bag of potatoes up and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Your problem now. I enjoy it. I oh, enjoy yeah. the laziness. Now, um, I will say that serial killer is a hint of where we're going with my grim and plays. Uh, well, not necessarily serial, but definitely killer. But before then, I want you to you guys to have a shot at weighing in. Any uh, updates or news you want to share mm. and keep the train Dark rolling? Because Chris has the youngster tonight, and we got <laughs> a whole pile of goods to get to. Can we uh, talk about my balls? <laughs> <laughs> 101, Lowry. 101, Lowry. Oh, yeah, yeah, do, do you ever <laughs> kick yourself in the balls? Do you, do you also call your balls the Twin Towers? I don't. <laughs> I call them the, the Lazy Saggies, I guess, lately. <laughs> then, wait a minute. Is it 9 inches and 11? Did we just okay. do the 9 11 episode? <laughs> kind of close there. Mm. No, repeatedly, like lately, I've been like, you know, getting out of the shower, putting on some underwear, and kicking myself in the nuts. Stop doing that. Kicking it's horrible. That's just crazy. Yeah. How do you, how do you kick know. yourself in the nuts? The heel. Yeah. You go to lift your leg up to put your your leg in your underwear and you, you heal your nuts. Because <laughs> no. No, I don't do that. I've been, uh, I'm neither I've, that limber I've, nor that low hanging. Hung? Yeah. <laughs> well, I okay. So I I did something in a similar vein. I don't know if I told you. I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or, or whatever. A couple weeks ago, um, it, it's a similar thing, but it was a different part of the body. So where you're, you you're doing something, and you're not paying attention to like how you're moving through space, and you end up hurting yourself. Yeah. Um, I, I got out of the shower and I was getting ready to hang up my towel and I just like kind of made that swooping motion, like kind of like go up and like going to throw it over the, the towel rod, you know? Yeah. Yeah. As I, as, as, as I went up, oh. I felt this, 
<laughs> screaming pain in my finger. I was like, what the fuck did I just, what the, ha- what the hell happened? Yeah. And I was looking at the edge of the wall of the shower enclosure. And I was like, well, that would be like a pretty serious, like, you know, burn or whatever. And I, then I looked down at my finger and there's just like blood, like flowing freely, like oh. everywhere. And I was like, what the fuck? So I go to the sink and it's just like, it's not stopping. It's just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. When, and do, you ball, when do your balls come into the story? Yeah, well, it's not, it's, pick it's it up. not the balls. It's, it's, it's just the fact that like you do something, you do, you do a motion that you do like every day and you just like oh, accidentally. Something's like, in the way. Mm-hmm. Something's in the way. Something takes it too far. Yeah. And... I love that you stopped to take pictures of the blood and send it to us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it was, it was that good deep it, red blood. It oh. still hurts, dude. And um, <laughs> I luckily didn't need stitches, um, but it was pretty close. It was very close to me needing stitches. And I just made it through the day with like a bunch of bandages and like neosporin on there. Yeah. And it just, you know, it started healing up, but like it still hurts. And there's going to be a big, a nice big scar on my finger, I can tell. But it was yep. just like one of those things that you just like, you just don't realize where you are in space and you do a thing and like you do it every day and then suddenly mm-hmm. zip, whoop, you just cut sure. the shit out of yourself or you kick yourself in the balls. Yeah. How it could be a serious injury. I was, I was winding up some, this is more closer to Lyle's story. I was winding up some cable just yesterday. I was doing some major cleaning. And I mean like a tiny gauge of just like speaker wire. But I got a little loosey-goosey with the winding, and one end of it whipped around and got me right in the fucking nuts. Ooh. And it, mm-hmm. before I felt it, I, I heard it. <laughs> I'm like, my balls sounded like an empty gourd. <laughs> like, am I hollowing out? <laughs> I thumped it gently with my own finger. I was like, no, that sounds right. It was just this hilarious, like... <laughs> and then the pain came in. I'm like, no! How? This tiny little thing uh. just... Right in the right in the sweet spot. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> it's like I, you know, see, it will find you. Pain yeah. will find you. Well, I, this is kind of being kind of an uh, occurrence of doing this, and like just you know try the steps next time you go to that shower and you put on your your underwear and just kind of like, it's the heel whacking in the nuts. Well. But uh, so anyway, I, I was joking around, but I was kind of almost serious. I was talking with somebody. I was like, you know, I'm about ready to change back to tidy whities <laughs> because mm. my balls are hanging in a way I keep it all nestled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're kicking yourself, <laughs> I think you should secure the cargo. Um, well, remember when we had that talk, we all had that talk around the campfire about uh, who is and who wasn't circumcised. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yes. Well, I found out, this <laughs> I found out just this week that um, apparently I wasn't circumcised, but I got no. <laughs> so, okay, that is that, wait, how what? would you not know I that? I don't. Yeah, my, I don't. I, well, I talked to my mom. She said you weren't circumcised. I said I wasn't. Well, she goes, no, go? you weren't circumcised. And I go, well, I mean, it feels like this that. Is fucking, this, is, this is a great mystery, Did Lyle. You fuck your foreskin off. Tell me you fucked it. Up. <laughs> he's setting us. He's setting us up. He's setting us up for something. I, know. I think how the crippler became the crippler was the fact I had more room to grow in. Oh, fucking like a, <laughs> like a pouch <laughs> just to keep on growing. Like, well, I got just the sweater. I may as well fit it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Turtle, so turtleneck and all. Yeah, that's my news for the day. <laughs> 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 you were born with a turtleneck, and you decided, no, nah, I'm going to grow out of them shits. I'm, I'm on David I don't know that I've ever heard that before. The weirdest fucking thing ever, right? What are the odds that your mom's fucking with you? <laughs> I don't know. Like, there was a foreskin last know. time I saw it, boy. It was and... the 70s, and they were real hippies. <laughs> and two, I don't think they really had the money to do such a thing. Hmm. You know? It's just, you know, it's just costly. I mean, we just had to pay for him to be born, you know? Mm-hmm. Him, that's you. <laughs> yeah, he's just gonna kick himself in it in the future anyway. Are we really gonna spend that much time? That much money investment in him? <laughs> I love that. Uh, much like he forced his cock through the foreskin, Lyle decided to force his way into telling the ball story on episode one hundred. After all, and I'm glad he did. Let's go, yeah. He's like, you know what? Got it. Pushing it through. Um, <laughs> I uh, I had a, a story I want to share, but I'm going to save it for next week because I uh, I want to get to our meat here. But I did want to, without further ado, say I've been fucking raw dogged by John Marks. What you watching once again, in mm. the best possible way? Uh, 
Prey. We got to talk about Prey. Okay. <laughs> anyone, did uh-huh. anyone else watch this yet? No, spoiler free, Martin. of course. Yeah, spoiler free. Prey is no, the uh, new. It. Oh man, it's the I've... new uh, Predator flick that's exclusively on Hulu, I believe. <laughs> Hold on, my kid's whispering at me. Go ahead, speak up. You've already interrupted. Yes. So- when your dog gives on your phone call, can you have a snack from the refrigerator? Yes, you can. Okay, I'll get one for you in a bit. All right, guys. Uh, okay. Chris, can I have a snack out of the refrigerator? Yeah. No, you fucking can't, Lyle. You haven't earned it. I want to push pop. I'll claim it. I'll claim pop. Yeah, be a better boy, Lyle. We'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Prey. Uh, exclusively on Hulu, I believe. Uh, directed by the uh, guy that made 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is a pretty fantastic flick. But uh, it's the story of the Predator coming down to Earth again. Uh, same old story we know, but 300 years ago. And he comes across uh, a native, uh, well, a whole native town, basically. And it's the story about their battle against him, and specifically one woman who uh, is amazing, electrifying to watch. Uh, really good. It's a fucking great movie. I uh, watched it outdoors on a, a projector with some friends, which was great because it takes place in kind of nature, you know, so it felt nice. right. Yeah, I and I came home and watched it again the next day because I was like, I enjoyed this enough. And I would watch it a third time. I thought it was really good. I need to, yeah, I need to watch it again. Did you, did you watch the Comanche dub? No, but I, I love that they did that. Yeah. So there's a whole dub okay, of it. After it's the third like watch. 100% in Comanche, I think, except for the French stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, um, you know, cause and I, I think it's the first time that's been done in yeah. a major, major film. Yeah. Like, and I, that when uh, I, I didn't watch it, my brother watched it, right? So I was in the living room. I was cooking dinner and I was kind of like watching it. And I was like, eh, yeah. And I, I was thinking to myself, you know what? This would be way better with subtitles. And I thought that when talking. I first started watching it too. And but so then like, we start watching it. I so, oh, go ahead. Well, I'm just saying that's awesome if they have it dubbed, you know. It's cool. It's so cool. In the, I, like, the I, version you yeah. saw, Chris, was English. English speaking. Yeah, so they're all talking. The indigenous right? people are talking in English. Yeah. It's yeah. mostly in English and they throw some Comanche in there here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but there is, there is a dub that's completely yeah. 100% that's, Comanche. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know how mm-hmm. everyone that I've heard talking about this movie, uh, which isn't a ton, but it, it, I've heard it. Uh, everyone seems to love it, but I don't know how I missed the fact that it was a Predator movie. Once I saw a graphic <laughs> for it, it was pretty oh. clear. I mean, they used the font. Yeah. You can see the fucking... Uh, the Predator, but I, I didn't know. No, I heard no mention of that at all. I, I think when they were initially hyping it up, it was it it was a secret. Like It wasn't like, hey, this is a new Predator movie. It was like, ooh, Prey coming mm. from Dan, the director of 10 Cloverfield Lane, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't really, you know what I mean? And it was kind of like all nebulous and like kind of like, well, what's, what, what's going on with this film? Like, why is well, this I, I had heard they were doing it, but I have fucking dismissed anything Predator related the you last know, like three entries have just been awful, you know. <laughs> like, how do you guys know. find out about your shit? I'm curious about this because I was thinking about this one. I'm like, well, how did I not? Well, I didn't even know about it. But it's like I, mean, I never media. see trailers. I don't go to yeah, movies. Social media, like you see him dropped or Twitter, like what's trending on Twitter. You start mm. following the right shit. This you know, was mostly Twitter for me, yeah, because I followed Dan t- Trachtenberg on there. I'm so offended. You, you call it the right shit. For a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so offended. I off. They're not naked. There's a problem. <laughs> a threat. The, uh, there, well, for some of us know that uh, Bethesda, the you know video game company, there is a game called Prey, and there was the the leak that there was going to be a movie or a TV series or a movie uh, called Prey, and I think we all kind of took it. I took it the wrong way. I thought it was. I think I might have been thinking that too. Was that that's the one that is that the one that came out like quite a while ago that had Art Bell? Yeah. I there's mean, two different. There's different ones. There's the original Prey video game okay, that yeah, was the, like yeah. based with like uh, Native American lore, and then there was the new version, which yeah. Bethesda did, which is completely different. It is. It's a lot yeah. different. Well, there's one even... that I'm pretty sure there's a game called Prey where Art Bell was. Uh, there was a radio show host in the show or in the game, and it was Art Bell. He, oh, you know, he, he was like, probably he the did, original he one. He did new lines, of course. Yeah, it, was, it was a I, really good. I think that was the original one because it was very heavily UFO. Yeah, well, this is like, definitely like twenty some years ago. It was a while ago. <laughs> About that long ago. Um. Yeah, twenty years ago would be two thousand two. So. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Oh sure. Well, that our, tracks. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll definitely check it out. I'm curious about it, and I'm glad that. Uh, yeah, I agree with Chris. There has there's been very little to be excited about in the Predator world, in uh, cinema. I'm surprised they haven't done a show, have they? And I just don't know about 
I don't think I don't so. Think it shows out of everything else. In fact, when I and first I, heard about Prey, I thought it was a show. I have not. So I haven't seen the OG Predator in like uh, it's been a long time. I, I don't up. remember. It does how long it's been since I've seen it. I've been meaning to watch it recently. Um, but the only reason I didn't say that Prey was better than the OG was because it wouldn't exist without the original one. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like. So that in my mind, and I remember it being like, I remember seeing that in the theater and going, holy shit, you know? Um, and I still think it probably, you just said, Chris, that it still holds up, right? I so, think so, yeah. Um, That'd be really good watching the movie theater. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I saw it in the theater. It's, it's really close, though. The theater, I think it's really close. It's really fucking close. We all, when we were young, we all loved part two better than the first one. I don't know if I would still. Predator Two, still feel the Danny that way. Glover flick. Yeah, we mm. that one was fucking hardcore, man. There was some gnarly shit. I need to rewatch. Yeah. I need to rewatch that too, dude, because I've been seeing a lot of people saying two was the best. And I was like, we all thought that really? back then, but you know, what? actually, we we thought things were different back then. We always thought part two was going to be bigger and better, and you know, uh, right. bigger there, budget, yeah. more more uh, violence, bigger body count. Uh, no. What's that snapping noise in the background? Oh, that's just me. Never mind. Hmm. Got a nervous snap. <laughs> I will say there's a there, without any spoilers. There's a direct tie-in to Predator Two. There's an Easter egg at the end of this what? movie. To Predator Two, I didn't know what it was. Uh, no, at the end of Prey, there is a direct link to Predator Two, and I didn't know it. I saw it in an article finally. I was like, oh, that's what that meant because I hadn't seen Predator yeah. Two since I was a kid. So, mm. nice, interesting. It's interesting that they would make a direct link to part two. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Although I guess did. the Predator itself is a direct well, link I guess to part it's beloved. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was such mm -hmm. a badass movie and such a cool concept and such a cool fucking villain, man. Like that glow in the dark. So eight, so perfectly 80s. But uh, yeah, you and know part what? of the reason I think part one holds up is because it's, it's all like out in the jungle. But that's what was cool about part two is that a completely different. It was in the city. And you had yeah. Predator, uh, you know, <laughs> running through the alleys. I don't know if I remember if it was New York or L.A., whatever. Well, the first one, you know, it was with Arnold, you know. He's like, you know, I'll throw us a dirty thing. And, you know, we <laughs> he all knew Arnold, you know, fucking with, like, Conan. So you like, that dude's fucking bigger than life. Oh, Arnold was our and entire you see, And then you see fucking Arnold against the fucking Predator. And that motherfucker is huge. And you're like, oh, dude, there is a fucking villain. I still you think know? one of the most badass scenes in Predator, the original, was when Arnold was, he mudded himself up. He figured it out muddied. that they had the infrared mm -hmm. heat sensor vision. So he muddied himself up and he was just like sitting in the bog, just like staring at him like, you know, 10 feet away. That was mm -hmm. so fucking just eyeballing him. scary and, and badass yeah. at the same time. He's just like, mm -hmm. keep still. Keep still. I was like, I don't think mm -hmm. I'm able to keep still. It's just like uh, if I saw a big grizzly bar out in the wild, I wouldn't be able to play dead. And I wouldn't have to because I would just be dead in a matter of a You'd be, a few, you'd be few caught minutes. by the fart bubbles coming out of the mud. <laughs> <laughs> Cursed. Oh, no. <laughs> Breakfast burrito. What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. <clears throat> well, uh, quickly, John Mark, do you have anything you want to throw on before I get on to my little grim and plez? Um, no, it'd be just another like a uh, sort of like um, watching recommendation thing. So I think I might save that for next time. Okay, save it for the old one hundred and one as well. Well, let's get on to my grim and plez. These are going to be letters or writings from killers, and we're going to be ending with what just was released, what came out of the dry sack in the famous Brian Laundry gabby petito case i don't know if you guys read any of this but i only just got around to reading it and it's uh, pretty troubling and i will give you a warning all of this is pretty troubling i think this first one we're going to start with might be the worst um but it's all pretty bad so if you want to skip ahead <laughs> awesome okay go did for you it say, did you say dry sack the dry sack yeah the dry bag i guess would have been a, a less interrupting I'm way to scared. say <laughs> well it goes back to my my dry sack oh. issue and i hit it with a uh, piece of string and it made a hollow gourd sound <laughs> uh so this next one or this first one is albert fish you may remember we talked about albert fish back in the old show and <laughs> to, by many accounts not the most prolific but certainly one of the most sadistic serial killers in history 
Um, he had murdered in 1934. He he had murdered a 10 year old girl named Grace Bud. And if that wasn't, if the horrific way this all went down wasn't enough, Fish wrote a letter to Grace's grief stricken mother, giving her the grisly play by play about oh. ha- what he did and a little bit of wow. why he wow. went down this path. Again, this is rough, folks. <laughs> Brace yourself. Uh, and imagine reading this as the mother of somebody who was just murdered horrifically. My dear Mrs. Bud, in 1894, a friend of mine shipped as a deckhand on the steamer Tacoma, Captain John Davis. They sailed from San Francisco to Hong Kong, China. On arriving there, he and two others went ashore and got drunk. When they returned, the boat was gone. At that time, there was a famine in China. Meat of any kind was from a dollar to three dollars a pound. So great was the suffering among the very poor that all children under twelve were sold to the butchers to be cut up and sold for food in order to keep others from starving. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he wrote. A boy or a girl under fourteen was not safe in the street. You could go into any shop and ask for steak, chops, or stew meat. Part of the naked body of a boy or girl would be brought out just as you would be brought out and just what you wanted cut from it. A boy or a girl's behind, which is the sweetest part of the body and sold as veal cutlet, brought the highest price. John said, John stayed there so long he acquired a taste for human flesh. On his return to New York, he stole two boys. 1 7 1 11. Took them to his home, stripped them naked, tied them in a closet, then burned everything they had on. Several times every day and night, he spanked them, tortured them to make their meat good and tender. Still with me? <laughs> uh. It gets worse. First, he killed the 11 year old boy because he had the fattest ass. Remember, he's writing this to this dead girl's mother. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, like, if there was, like, a Weight Watchers convention. I mean, nobody's going to be safe around there. You yeah, know, lose the weight, sir. He had the oh, fattest yeah. ass and, of course, the most meat on it. Every part of his body was cooked and eaten except head, bone, and guts. He was roasted in the oven, all of his ass, boiled, broiled, fried, stewed. The little boy was next went the same way. At the time, I was living at 409 East 100th Street, rear right side. He told me so often how good human flesh was, I made up my own mind to taste it. On Sunday, June the 3rd of 1928, I called on you at 406 West 15th Street, brought you pot cheese, strawberries. We had lunch. Grace sat in my lap and kissed me. I made up my mind to eat her. On the pretense, uh, this is insane, right? On the pretense of taking her to a party, you said yes, she could go. I took her to an empty house in Westchester I had already picked out. When we got there, I told her to remain outside. She picked wildflowers. I went upstairs and stripped off all my clothes. I knew if I did not, I would get her blood on them. When all was ready, I went to the window and called her. Then I hid in a closet until she was in the room. When she saw me all naked, she began to cry and tried to run downstairs. I grabbed her and said she would tell I grabbed her and she said she would tell her mama. First I stripped her naked. How she did kick, bite and scratch. I choked her to death, then cut her into small pieces so I could take my meat to my rooms, cook and eat it. How sweet and tender her little ass was roasted in the oven. It took me nine days to eat her entire body. I did not fuck her, though. I could have and wished I had, but she died a virgin. That was what this... (laughs) <laughs> Jesus, poor well, you know what's fucking up? woman. It... Red. Is this she, how she, she found to... out her daughter had died too? No, she yeah. knew that her daughter had died at that point, but she didn't know all the details. 
could you imagine like i mean with uh, for her i mean she's probably reading that and like halfway through that you know prologue we're like you know i came to your house and you know no oh, we it's had got lunch. everything she's got That's so much click. guilt i feel like i know that motherfucker was that guy you know yep. and then, blame you know, self blame yep it's about as grim as it gets, and I'm, I'm all, I hesitated bringing it, but I'm like, it's a grim and pleasant, man. I got to live up you to it. You better have the most pleasant follow up to that <laughs> motherfucker. Well, it's it's pleasant, but uh, now w- before we move on to that, and I will get to one immediately. Uh, the only good thing about this letter is that it actually led authorities to locating Albert Fish and ending his insanely evil reign of terror. Um, I can't remember all the details of that but they traced him back by where this letter was sent. Some uh, telltale signs on it. So, uh, bright side, if you want to look at it as a bright side. Now, let's get even brighter, though. Let's do a quick shift to a pleasant. A little palate cleanser. Today is Tuesday, which means Taco Tuesday. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just did that with my kid. Mm -hmm. Back to the groom. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Tasteless, I know. (laughs) Hold on. I'm going to send you real quick. I'm going to send you this photo of my kid fucking looking at this taco like he's never seen anything (laughs) so wonderful in his entire fucking life. Just look at this right here. Boom. Just making love to that taco. Oh, yeah. He wants that taco. (laughs) He's getting that taco. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's amazing. (laughs) Oh, I want that too. Uh, Okay, so Taco Tuesday. Thanks to... You ever wonder where Taco Tuesday comes from? How long we've been doing it? Who thought of it? Uh, No, but now I am. (laughs) Bet you haven't. Uh, Well, thanks to some investigative reporting, the kind that I like, from (laughs) BackyardTaco.com. It's a website I love, actually. BackyardTaco.com. It's a great website. Uh, We do have some answers. First of all, I did not know this, but a large franchise actually owns the trademark to the phrase Taco Tuesday, which doesn't seem to be holding up well for them. But do you guys want to take a uh, guess at which franchise owns Taco Tuesday? Mm. Ruby Tuesday? No. Taco Bell? Good guess. Taco Time? No. Uh, Lyle, you want to take a stab? Taco Loco? You hit almost all of them, but Taco John's was left out. It's more of an East Coast thing. We got Taco Time, Taco Treat. Taco Bell. I think Taco Bell is everywhere, but I don't think there's Taco Time east of the Rockies. I think that's more no, of No, Taco Time started here in the PNW. Yeah. yeah, and it's the best. And I've had Taco, back in the day, I've had Taco John's, and I had Taco <clears throat> Treat, <laughs> I think in Montana, and very similar thing to Taco Time. It's that very Americanized taco uh, stuff. Good stuff, but not, you know, near authentic, of course. But anywho... Taco John's actually got the uh, trademark. Now, they even claim that they invented Taco Tuesday itself. Let me mute my Facebook here. Um, But that's clearly bullshit. (laughs) So they trademarked Taco Tuesday, the phrase, in 1986. But there were well-established uses well before that. Uh, and in fact, there's a small taco place in New Jersey. Did I just see a bunch of hearts shooting out of John Mark's window? Did you guys see that? Yeah, I, I saw that there was like a like, like a heart like thing on in this interface. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, great. You guys are going to be fucking with that while I'm trying to do my whole presentation. Oh, no. Now, now Christopher's sad. <laughs> no, I've got it. I've got it. Done it. Like 60 sad emojis. Overcooked me. There goes the thumb. middle finger. Here we descend. go. It's already off on the rails. <laughs> well, we well, are in the pleasant a- phase. Oh. <laughs> um, I Okay, so there was a small place in New Jersey that had actually trademarked the phrase first, but they had only trademarked it in the state of New Jersey. So Taco John's trademark still holds up in the rest of the country, but it does not work in New Jersey. The whole thing's a little odd. But Taco John's has tried to go after a few Ma and Pa places over the years, but it seems to be a case now where the phrase is so commonplace that it's kind of like a cat's out of the bag thing. Uh, but you can go back and find advertisements in old newspapers, especially in Texas, going all the way back to the 30s. Um, and in October 1933, White Star Cafeteria 
created a week-long campaign in order to let the locals know that they're offering these new fandangled Mexican tacos each Tuesday. Uh, now, as tacos took off more, places started offering them on Tuesdays as well. It seems like maybe, it's just a guess, but it seems like they just picked a day because they were new and they weren't you know, super popular yet. They didn't want to kill a bigger going out day like Wednesday or Friday or Saturday. So Tuesday became Taco Tuesday. But the phrase well, plus it's got in the it, it's both it, they both start with a T, so it's like yeah. tongue, that's why it's stuck. But the phrase Taco Tuesday doesn't seem to have appeared until 1973, and it was not Taco John's. It was the Snow White Drive-In that used it uh, in South Dakota's Rapid City. So after that, the usage started to grow uh, again, well before Taco John's trademarked it. So there you mm. have it. Some mystery, but some answers. And uh, I can tell you, I really want tacos now. Between that picture of Christopher's yeah, boy having a same. an affair with that taco, and uh, now knowing the history of Taco Tuesday, and it's Tuesday, <laughs> I'm really fucking hungry all of a sudden. But first, back to some of the grim. Now this is pretty light stuff for a moment uh, compared to what we just went through. But this is a couple of snippets from some recently deciphered ciphers of the Zodiac Killer. And I believe this one is called 340 Cipher. And it reads, I like killing people because it is so much fun. It's more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. To kill something gives the most gives me the most thrilling experience. It's even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, listen to this, this is some uh, egomaniac sociopath shit. The best part of it is when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and all that I have killed will become my slaves. And I will not give you my name because you will try to slow me down. Um, this is hard to read because it was sloppy. I mean, it's, de it's deciphered, but you know, and <laughs> tried to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. There's a glimpse into a madman. Uh, another little piece. Uh, I think this was a, a separate cipher. Again, only recently decrypted. I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise all the sooner. Because I now have enough slaves to work for me where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise. So they are afraid of death. I am not afraid because I know that my new life is a life that will be easy in paradise. Creepy shit. I wonder if he actually, like if these were just taunts or if he genuinely believed them shits. I hate to disappoint, but like I had my heart stopped a few times and I didn't see no light. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it takes a few I think, minutes. I think he, be I think he believed that shit. Yeah, probably. You know, I think about stuff like that. I was just thinking about that while you were telling me that story about the, the serial killers. And it's just like, you know, where does one kind of like stop? You know, it's like if say, say, for instance, if you're in a, uh, a life threatening, endangering uh, episode, like you're stuck on the pass or something like that. And somebody pulls over to try to help you, but chases you around with like a tire iron. So, you, you know, you pull it away from them and you kill them. They're dead. You just killed somebody. And like, so you cover it up and you get away with it, you know, but what would lure you, you know, so much of more murders, you know, until you become a, like a fucking serial killer. You know, well, that's just, not you know, really. Well, no, no, I'm just saying it's just a thing. You know, if you, like, yeah, wow, if you like, just happen to kill, well, you, who knows what would that's trigger not a, something that's not a in the back of your head. Yeah. I mean, it could yeah. happen, but I, I, what I. What I'm saying is, is like that instance, it doesn't have to be that particular instant. It's just an instant where you took somebody's life you know mm -hmm. and all of a sudden like oh, well, look, even I that again and then you're like hey eh, even you know? serial killers that start like torturing animals and they think about killing they've been dreaming about it since they were a kid and they work their way up to it even a lot of them they're not all created equally you know some of them are just they have zero feeling 100 percent right. blank eye sociopaths and they kill because it makes them feel something and they're going to keep on killing killing some of them have this other voice in their head that's guilt. It's like, no, I don't want to do it. They try to fight it. 
those ones in a, a strange way almost creep me out even more <laughs> like there's this torment within hey. this person is like uh, gary ridgeway the, uh, green, the river. green green river killer talked about that he 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 wrote it once he was caught and he you know he admitted to all his murders i think there's almost like 60 or something the most prolific that we know of serial killer in the u.s and right in our own fucking backyard here in Washington state. That was my youth was being terrified of the green river killer. Uh, every time we would go visit the West side, nothing ever really happened here on the dry side, but it all happened over in uh, the West side of the, the state. But he, once he was in prison, he wrote a letter to his wife kind of like reverse engineering everything. Cause she didn't know that shit was going on. And he was basically saying how he tried several times to quit the same way, you know, he likened it to being an alcoholic. He's like, I tried to go sober and I, I stayed sober for as long as I could. And then I just had to start killing again. And that's when he ended up getting caught. But, uh, well, years later with DNA and all the other evidence that was coming forward. But so serial killers are tricky. There's not really a one size fits all, but some of them do just kind of stop. It's like they do. They'll say, I, I got it out of my system. You know, they would mm. kill and that would relieve some sort of pressure. It would or it would get them high one way or the other. It would satisfy them and they would walk away from it for a while. Whether they were living a normal life in between those times, and that differs too. Some people were family men. Some people were, you know, uh, normal, seemingly normal, friendly neighbors like the Ted Bundy variety. They could go out, they could go on dates, they could have friends. Yeah. Other people BTK were just shut was in. like that too. Was yeah. it like a family man? Just yeah. Like, the, know, the community was the shocked. Community. They couldn't yeah. believe that he was the BTK, the BTK killer. When uh, we were in junior high, do you remember who, who was, was it Bundy? Everybody was like protesting, like burn Bundy, burn Bundy. Remember yeah. that? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was Bundy. Yeah. Yeah. He was on uh, death row. And I think that that was like the, my, my earliest recollections of seeing people opposing the death, uh, the death penalty. And he was a big part of that. You know, he ended up getting fried, but uh, a lot of people didn't want it because a lot of people don't want the death penalty in general. I'm one of them now. When I was younger, I, you know, I've talked about it before. I believe I don't have a problem with the eye for an eye mentality. Like if someone takes a life, no, you forfeited your life. Fine by me. My problem is how many people have been uh, sent to um, the gas exactly. chamber, yeah. the the hangings, the. Uh, Electric that chair that were innocent, and it seems yeah. like every fucking year somebody gets exonerated that's on death row because of some new mm -hmm. evidence or some new yep. admission. So that yep. that is reason alone. That should horrify anybody. Um, it's bad enough that you would have to spend that time in prison, but at least, at the very least, that time in prison might allow you time enough to see a little bit of freedom before you fucking die. Um a lot of times uh, that evidence came too late. We, we know dozens of cases like that just in the U.S., just in recent years, really. Um, so, but yeah, I think that's why it was such a, a f causing a fever pitch, if you will. But uh, anywho, uh, let's see. Let's move on to, that was a short one. Let's do one from Jack the Ripper. I know we did a whole show on that back in the day, but this was, uh, <laughs> Jack the Ripper was in, he was legendary for so many fucking reasons and shit like this is part of it. So he sent a letter in 1888 to the central news agency and it says, I quote the next job I do. This was after several killings. The next job I do, I shall clip the lady's ears off. You may remember he was mostly killing young prostitutes. Yeah, I shall there's... clip the lady's ears off and send to the police officers just for jolly. Wouldn't you? Keep this letter back till I do a bit more work. Then give it out straight. My knife's so my knife is so nice and sharp, I want to get to work right away if I get the chance. Jesus. Mm. Good luck. You gotta put yourself in that fucking time era, man. Oh, it's yeah. like stone cobble buildings. Yeah. Everybody's wearing gas, top hats gas and, lamps fucking, and <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, horse it's carriages. a fucking dreamy kind of uh, yeah. He said, good luck, yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Um, now, they thought the letter was a hoax until two days later when uh, a double murder took place with all the Ripper traits. But this time, one of the victim's ears had been clipped off. Grim. 
Mm-hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ripper. but we we they they still have not 100 identified who that no. was. Right? No, there are no. as as per usual, there are a few most likely yeah. suspects. Remember, even some people thought it was H. H. Holmes. Yeah, they it's thought like D. B. Cooper. Was, it's yeah, like still still no 100 yeah. percent positive. Right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, crazy. there's a new D. B. Cooper uh, mm-hmm. miniseries on Netflix <clears throat> that I highly recommend. Oh, nice. A lot of it I knew. And we, we, of course, we did a DBD, a DBD, a DB Cooper episode way back in the day. Um, but there is some stuff I that I had not heard. <laughs> yeah, that's, I keep saying that. I guess I could stop saying, yeah, we covered this back in the day. Uh, 450 oh. shows, we better. <laughs> better the the only thing I don't think we ever discussed about that was like he uh, apparently had like a, a family member uh, that swore up and down here you because know, they, they had a, de- the, a show. Uh, trying to find out the truth, and I think there was experts on that, like the whole show that um, had people that were coming forward say, "Yeah, that was my uncle," you know, and I could prove it, you know. Yeah, but, well, there are uh, lots so, of we that. We never talked about it. I don't know. Well, we definitely talked about that part on the show. We we talked about all the prime suspects, but one thing I don't remember talking about. I mean, maybe we did, and I forgot was yeah. concerning some of the money. But I, I'm not going to spoil it. I, I I want you guys to go watch this. It's a really stylish oh. and fun and yeah. well shot docu <laughs> it's a docu series it's not a show it's a it's a documentary on series on db cooper um there's Those some new fun. shit there's some new shit and there's some old shit that i just it, it's presented in a good way and it really got gets your imagination going again and they they uh they went after this one guy that they were hell bent certain that uh, is still living and be and would be D.B. Cooper. We just talked about this, though. He'd be in, in his 80s, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's hey, possible that he'd people. be alive, but probably you know, not Bob, out and about. Living, uh, you know Bob Emlin's going to be like 100 this year. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> what, a life, what a life he's had since that, uh, what, 1968? Was that the uh, patterson Gimlin film? It still blows my mind that he was at Radar and... Talking right? about all that <laughs> shit, <laughs> just so much what, what a fucking night on the fiftieth anniversary of the uh, original Patterson Gimlin film. That was a big event, standing room only. Yeah, one of our first big events. I got it recorded somewhere. I still have it. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. Um, before we move on from the Ripper, I wanted to say that I saw that he tried to write this and a few other letters in the victim's blood. But it had solidified, and so it wasn't. He wasn't able to do it, and he actually wrote about that. So he was yeah. like, "I guess red ink will have to do." But it was like, <laughs> was like that's almost a Spinal Tap moment, isn't it? It's like you sit down, this big evil mastermind, uh, <laughs> most famous serial killer of all time, and you sit down to write your your grim letter, and you dip your fountain pen into the blood, and it's like you start to, dear sirs. Ah, oh, damn. damn it! It's all, <laughs> it's all crusty and hard. <laughs> so I had to go to the fucking store and get some red ink. <laughs> I just found that such a human, weird human moment, uh, mm-hmm. almost Spinal Tap worthy. But anywho, oh damn it! Yeah, <laughs> the drummer's dead again. Yeah, here's another one. Um, from the, I can just uh, imagine why he's doing that. And all of a sudden, John Mark comes out of the shower. Hey, man, I got a finger here if you want me to rub <laughs> <laughs> Still fresh. You have no, to be solidified. It won't stop. Won't stop. Can't stop. What? Here's another one that was thought to be a hoax at one point. Um, and it's known as the Dear Boss Letter. Get a, more, get a little bit more flavor from this guy's personality. And you could totally see how he could be sort of like a Ted Bundy esque charmer. That was maybe a a man about town and yeah, demented and fucked in the head, but able to like have fun with it in a weird way. Um, So it says, dear boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. (laughs) I have laughed when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. That joke about leather apron gave me the real fits. I am down on whores, and I shan't quit ripping them till I do get buckled. Grand work, the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work, and I want to start again. You will soon hear, f- you will soon hear of me with my funny little games. 
I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle over the last job to write with it. But, it, oh, I, sorry, I didn't, I, forget, I thought that that was something I took out, but him, this is how he actually worded it. But it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. And he even mm. writes, ha ha. The next job I do shall clip the lady's ears. And that was uh, more it ties back into it. But yeah, um, yours truly, yep. Jack the Ripper. Again, little wonder why this man became so fucking legendary, right? Mm. Like, in, in, like Lyle said, a ma- it's captivating now and fascinating now. But imagine it as it was happening. In Dude, that there was dark, like technology-free, running around the fucking whole yeah. back streets. What a time! It's a different era, man. A I mean, all together to be alive. Well, uh, it's time for a pleasant. Who wants Yay. to know a little bit of the uh, science behind foot fetishes? Ooh, me, me. Mm-hmm. By the way, quickly, <laughs> maybe we talked about this before. Are you guys into feet at all? Anything? Love, mm-hmm. like, hate, mm-hmm. indifferent? Mm-hmm. Indifferent. I like to paint my toenails, but that's about it. I do remember yeah. that when you stayed with me. I remember In that. red uh, ink. I like- <laughs> oh, it got solidified. <laughs> I have oh, a, damn it. I have a handsome foot, I would like to say. It's not like an ugly foot. It's a handsome foot. I wasn't asking if you were into uh, your own feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Different psychology. Fine. No, I, yeah, I, I, you know, either way, it's you- like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like a cute petite little foot's fine, you know. But if it has like just big old bunions all over it, it's like, nah, get that off. Well, bunions. I think even foot fetishists are picky about their feet. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna rub my wiener on the foot or anything. Mm-hmm. I like feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like. I'm feet. glad you have fucking boundaries, Lyle. <laughs> well, you know, I'm gonna rub my wiener on no foot. Uh, right. Um, well, I like feet, but I would I would stop shy of saying that I have a fetish. I mean, maybe. Uh, kind of but i feel like i don't know where the line is you know it's like i don't look at feet porn i don't look at uh you know i don't don't go out of my way to look at foot fetish stuff and there's plenty of that even on tiktok of course because what if there was a what if there was a foot like inside of a kennel Hmm, i'm listening Continue. Go we, on. I like to call them pause. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Complete I really pause for pause. <laughs> we'll pause for pause. <laughs> That's something that we would have talked about making to Tales from the Space Pod here. <laughs> Tales from the Space Pod. Mm, this thing oh, writes itself. Oh, pod. <laughs> uh, space Pod. Uh, okay, our- so... There may actually be, and it is a may, but there may be some science behind this because Moxie Rose of the Radar Dames and contributor to the Comet's sex column, Dear Moxie, uh, shared a very fascinating tidbit that may help explain why so many, especially men, uh, are attracted to feet. So get a load, uh, (laughs) if you will, of this. She writes, in general, a foot fetish is considered the most common fetish. To take this a step further, there is supposedly a scientific reason. I say supposedly because the full depth of of human sexuality is one we are just beginning to scratch the surface on as far as research goes. So, of the studies that have looked into kinks, fetishes, human sexuality, and its correlation to the human brain, this is the most conclusive evidence we have. And it all has to do with a part of the brain known as the... I'm going to botch this. I'm, I'm certain of it. The, som- the somatosensory humonculus. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> First try. Mm-hmm. Humonculus. So, That's what they called me in high school. Uh, the Nailed sens- it. In other words, the sensory map of your brain in your body. Think of it this way. We're all familiar with the wrinkles that you can see throughout the surface of the brain. Those wrinkles are called sulci? 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 Well, let's call them wrinkles. Uh, and the let's area... call them wrinkles. <laughs> That's some um, smooth, smooth brain would say. Smooth, <laughs> salty. Uh, and the areas that look like noodles between the wrinkles are called jiri. Again, jiri. I don't know if I know. Everybody's noodle patterns are different, like a fingerprint. But there are Beautiful. certain structures that are uniform across all people. The uh, the somatosensory cortex is one of those structures. It's the main part of your brain that feels physical touch. And if you look at a map of the uh, 
somatosensory humunculus, you'll notice that uh, <laughs> what are, humunculus. I think I'm saying it, it close. Right. Humunculus it good. has to be close. You'll notice that the feet are immediately adjacent to the genitals. Oh, so, wow. in other words, where your brain feels things um, and processes certain things, your genitals is right next. They're right next door neighbors to the feet. Huh. Uh, if, as far as your brain is concerned, there. Uh, so the close proximity makes it incredibly easy for our brain's wires to get crossed, leading to foot fetishes to be one of, if not the most common fetish of them all. Kind of neat. Uh, huh? And I'm going to admit something. I'm probably probably going to I'm probably going to regret. But you already said you won't fuck a foot. No, but I would you fuck your own foot? Listen, Apparently, listen, you're okay. trying. What's happening in the show? And and answer if it's true with you. It will be uh, you know revealing. Okay. I actually am kind of more aroused, like a woman with small hands. <laughs> I immediately think of the SNL <laughs> character with oh, what's her kisser tiny. with the two super tiny hands. <laughs> How no, small are we talking? Oh, is this because it makes the crippler look no, extra like clipped? Small, crippler? Not, like, not like child small, but like... Okay, a, thank you. <laughs> small hand. Like, okay. I wasn't going to ask, well, but... Well, no, I'm... seriously, I dated a girl like... just. Uh, it was probably la right before I got cancer. Or found out I had cancer. And we we're, you know, everything was kind of like there, but like, you know, not so much. But I was like, God damn, you got really small hands. Put your hand in my hand. I'm like, you know what would look really big in your hand? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So, Hold yeah, it there's... closer, tiny yeah, hand, go. girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not feet with me, but I am kind of like a little bit of uh, turned on with uh, small hands. Mm -hmm. Small hands. No, small no hands. there's no judgment here. Um, nah. You're attracted to what you're attracted to. Not weird. Expect me to say that. I mean, it's it's weird. not weird. I'm not weird. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. I'm real oh, good stuff. All right, uh, one more uh, grim. Now, this brings us current because, as I teased, you may recall that around pretty much exactly this time last year, the whole nation was completely gripped by this developing true crime story of Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. Of course, we now know that Brian murdered Gabby and then took his own life in the swamplands for the Gators to rip him apart, which it seems like they did. Uh, now, they recently released the contents of the infamous notebook that was in the dry sack uh, near Laundry's remains. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to read. Was <laughs> John Mark laughing at dry sack? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a throwback <laughs> to Lyle laughing at it earlier. <laughs> and I'm going to say I got a full sack. but I'm going to read. The, it's long. There's several pages, but I'm going to read what clearly seems to make the most sense. Uh, the most, the, which is really the end of it. It's, it's his last words. And again, you know, if this bothers you, you, well, it should bother you. Skip ahead a few minutes and we'll be closer to a uh, weird triv. But Better yet, but if you actually just speed up the podcast, it'll oh, sound yeah, like it'll chick over, and it won't be that bad. It'll be over it'll sooner be and like, it might be a little cute. That could be, be like, some real yeah, psychological but, trivia. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> well, that. Listen, we were all fucking. Remember, we were like, "What's in that fucking notebook? What's in the bag? What's in?" We have it now, and it's What's like in the box. So it it does feel like traveling into the future because, as as glued as I was to the story, I moved on from it and never really looked back. And I I saw the headlines. I think they released this just a couple months ago, so it's fresh. But I haven't taken the time to read it until it occurred to me to do a grim and pleasant today. So it's fucking fascinating to get closure, at least in his words. Now, a lot of people are c calling bullshit, and you might see why. Um, it says, rushing back to our car trying to cross the streams. I mean, they're out tra traveling across the country in their van camping. Trying to cross the streams before it got too dark to see or too cold. I hear a splash and a scream. I could barely see. I couldn't find her for a moment, shouted her name. I found her breathing heavily, gasping. She was freezing cold, even in the blazing hot national parks of Utah. The temperature had dropped to freezing and she was soaking wet. I carried her as far as I could from the stream toward the car, stumbling, exhausted in shock. I knew I couldn't carry her to safety. Some of this is like, it, there are parts that the water got into the text so it's an ill ill eligible ill eligible sure. <laughs> rhinoceros well, no, 
<laughs> I mentioned the, I'm almost out Make of whiskey. Make yourself sound good, Ron. <laughs> he says, you bet I will. <laughs> yeah, you told you, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like, when my illegible, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you you're all the time. I should. Uh, I'll be too lazy to do it, though. Uh, I knew I couldn't carry her to safety. I started a fire and spooned her as close to the heat. She was so thin, had already been freezing too long. I couldn't at the time realize that I should have started a fire, but I wanted her out of the cold back to the car. From, from where I started the fire, I had no idea how far the car might be, only knew it was across the creek. When I pulled Gabby out of the water, she couldn't tell me what hurt. She had a small bump on her forehead that eventually got larger. Her feet hurt, her wrist hurt, but she was freezing and shaking violently. While carrying her, she continually made sounds of pain. Laying next to her, she said little. Uh, between violent shakes, gasping in pain, begging for an end to her pain. Let's see where this is going. She would fall asleep, and I would shake her awake, fearing she wouldn't fearing she shouldn't close her eyes if she had a concussion. She would wake in pain, start her whole painful cycle again, furious that I was the one waking her. There was some illegible stuff in there, too, if it's not making sense. <laughs> she, wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't let me try to cross the creek. Thought like me that the fire would go out in her sleep and she'd freeze. I don't know the extent of Ab of Gabby's injuries, only that she was in extreme pain. I ended her life. I thought it was merciful that it was what she wanted, but I now see all the mistakes I made. I panicked. I was in shock. But from the moment I decided, took away her pain, I knew I couldn't go on without her. I rushed home to spend any time I had left with my family. I wanted to drive north and let James or TJ kill me, but I wouldn't want them to spend time in jail over my mistake, even though I'm sure they would have liked to. Yes, I'm, brother. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't remember these names, but I'm sure Gabby's friends or family. But I wouldn't want to spend... Oh, blah, blah, blah. I am ending my life not because of fear of punishment, but rather because I can't stand to live another day without her. I've lost our whole future together, every moment we could have shared. I'm sorry for everyone's loss. Please do make not... Oh, please do not make life harder for my family. They lost a son and a daughter. The most wonderful girl in the world. Gabby, I am sorry. I have killed myself by this creek in hopes that animals may tear me apart. That it may make some of her happy. Please pick up all of my things. Gabby hated people who litter. Well, that was it. Weird. Well. Interesting. So there's a lot going on here, of course. One. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. He's trying mm -hmm. to make himself... Listen, it could have gone down this way, but well, I think a lot of people are like, dude, <laughs> this is like a half confession. It and he's making is. himself it... look like uh, he was doing what he thought was the merciful thing as opposed to I'm an abusive fuck that got out of control and now I can't deal with the pain or the guilt or the possibility of punishment. Well, but... he doesn't sound stupid. You know what I mean? Like he, no, he, uh, if, but he doesn't sound rational. Is the uh, thing. Well, the point is, is like he kind of knew, you know, not to let somebody like you know that has head injuries, you know, go to sleep because they might not wake up. Those type of traits, you know, I mean, he's intelligent enough to know that she's that, yeah, that's, that's pretty common knowledge. That, that's she's, pretty common knowledge, though. I, I mean, you know, he starts a fire for her, but he doesn't want to leave the fire. But I, me or you or anybody else, I mean, if it was your loved one that you were with and she was hurt, you're going to get her to the car and get her to the fucking hospital by any yeah. means necessary. You're going to pack her over your shoulder if you have to. And just, yeah, I don't care how far in the middle of nowhere you are, you're not getting any closer to help by sleeping know. it off and whatever she's doing out <laughs> in the wild. Streams? She what could the be, fuck? What she could be doing, doing in the back seat of the car <laughs> while you're flying to safety, hopefully getting pulled yeah. over by somebody. And then yeah, like, yeah. oh shit, there's a cop. Great. Here's what's happening. Oh. Mm-hmm. So and I don't think a lot of people are buying end, it. The whole thing at the end, like maybe he felt 
okay, so if any of that went down, like he says it did, like the whole thing at the end, like, oh, I'm going to kill myself by this stream. And no, I was going to have these guys kill me. Like, what? That No, that you, you don't like, oh, I feel bad about this. So I'm going to tell, ask someone to kill me. What? Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's not. Okay. He's Sorry. trying, he's trying to lionize himself. Like he's trying to somehow through all of this, he's still trying to be some sort of a knight. Like I wanted them to have to take out their anger on me. I want to give the family this gift of me being yeah. torn apart by gators. Um, well, here's a, <laughs> please pick here's up the trash. Question. That's what Gabby would have wanted. Yeah, that I saw it torn apart by life. gators open for uh, captured by robots in two thousand five. <laughs> gators is a doozy of a band name. So, isn't? so did they ever find his body? Like uh, you know, DNA? Like yeah, yeah. Positive, Well, they so. found his skull and like they found remains. He had okay. definitely been, yeah. Uh, you know, between the the inhospitable, you remember this was in the the Everglades in the summer and the swamps. I think it might have been closer to spring. Actually, the water was what rising, and then it started to settle again. And that when once it settled, that's when all this shit was found. But you may remember there was so much craziness with this story. The fucking lawyer for the laundries was a nut job. The laundry's parents were out there looking around, and after oh, yeah. weeks and weeks of millions of dollars of trained search personnel combing through every inch of that place, they're just like they're out there for an hour and oh, they just man. stumble upon his bag. Yeah, There's so cool. much weirdness to the story. And then after all this, you get this quote unquote confession. Uh some people are buying it. Some people say that this this is what it is. Why would he lie? Well, this is his legacy. <laughs> you know, if you, if you killed somebody. He would lie you, because he wasn't in his right mind. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's. He, maybe there's, he didn't even lie. Maybe it. he was just like saying what he saw as the truth, but it was not, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, ultimately it is interesting to see this look into it. When a year ago we were all just wondering, super curious and fascinated about the story. And, there is what he wrote. Um, now, very quickly, I'm going to end on a pleasant. This is a tale right out of mine own back or my own front yard. Now, many of you uh, might know that monarch butterflies are now considered an endangered species. Really? Now, one of the many culprits, uh, I think it's a big culprit, has to do with the way that we have made the land that we own less about nature and more about some sort of societal standard with these lush green lawns treated with chemicals and pesticides and weed killers that essentially strip the land of everything that wildlife needs. Uh -huh. Well, when Sarah lived here, she, she either planted or pointed out that there were some wild milkweeds growing out in my yard. And she was telling me about how insects of all sorts will make these weeds basically a hub of activity for their survival. And I have let, since hearing that, I've let a whole bunch grow and I have never seen so many fucking bees as I have this year. And they are all over that milkweed. And I only have, I don't know, nice. maybe <clears throat> less than 10 plants. Um, and you remember the bees were starting to disappear a few years ago. Everyone was like, where the fuck are all the bees going? Uh -huh. uh, well, they're everywhere right now on this, these little bushes. I mean, they're not even bushes. They're just... I think one of them is like three feet tall. The rest are small. They're small plants. They don't have to take up much space, and you don't need many of them. Uh, now, lots of bugs, like even bees, can feed and live off of other plants, but monarch butterflies actually need milkweed to sustain life. It's the only plant on the entire planet that will allow the monarch species to survive. Huh. Um and now I am seeing so many fucking monarchs in my yard, like every fucking day. And when, uh, it, it's, it's been well, satisfying this, to see that happen. This spring when I went up to uh, up, uh, the Icicle River mm -hmm. to go fishing for uh, Saka, I think. Saka. Uh, we were up there, and uh, it was right below the hatchery. And there's a, you know, the river comes down through there, and there's like a little disabled dock I was fishing off of. And I walked down to the, the water edge, and as soon as I walked down there, there was like 20 or 30 monarch butterflies, and they all just went whoo, 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 right been, up in the air. Would have been some but milkweed like, in the area. I was like, mm -hmm. it like just, holy it, shit. Well, because it was like <clears throat> nine in the morning, and the sun was just coming up. I was like, dude, that's fucking pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't even film that. Well, it's been satisfying to see, especially when I look over at my neighbor's completely clean, tidy, chemically altered lawn and see mm. zero, like zero wildlife. I don't even think I ever see birds over there, like trying to find something to eat. So uh, get yourself some milkweed. You don't need much. Just plant a couple or let it grow if it's already growing wild, you know. And uh, you can still mow your yard in parts, water it, keep it green and lush, but toss out the chemicals, you know, get rid of the pesticides, the weed killers. I, if, if I'm being honest, I don't think we actually have the right to do that kind of bullshit because we already fucked nature up its ass when we built cities, you know, when we built neighborhoods and we clear cut trees and uproot the grounds and pour concrete to live on. It's like the least we can do is leave a little room out there for nature to thrive in some spots. Um, oh. So get rid of the poisons. You can maintain a pretty lush green yard without the poisons. A little more work, but uh, fucking do it. Get rid of it. Okay. And so you got plant like some milkweed. City block across the street that's nothing but concrete now. Yeah. Yeah. A park. And, but I'm telling you, just a couple of these plants has completely changed the ecosystem of my tiny little slice of the world. So if everybody did just a little bit of that, it'd be a complete game changer. And it happened in one season. So right. it's not like we're talking about plant this seed and in 10 years, you're going to see it pay off. No, plant the seed and maybe even this year, you're going to start seeing it pay off. Anywho, I thought that that would be my pleasant to end on uh, a sweet, easy way, free way, really, to uh, give back to Nage. Nice. Uh, all right. So on that note, shall we take a quick little break and get on to our 100th weird triv? Fuck. Yes. That sounds crazy to say it that way. Why does that sound like yeah. more of a deal than 100 <laughs> episodes? All right. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, right back. <laughs> I don't need a break. I'm good. Uh, well, I did have, uh, I'm not going to say who, but I had like a fucking bucket list guest for tonight who's still going to come on. Somebody's never been on the show before that I can hardly wait to get on. Mm. I'm not going to say who, uh, but they are coming. So I got my the second best option. Somebody that's been with us for a long time, a regular contributor to the show. Let's see if they are available. Hello. Please welcome to the show, Katie Surgery Jeff, oh, returning. Surgery, surgery Jeff. Jeff. Mm. Hello. Welcome. Hey. Thank you. You were one of, yeah, Abby Holmes was one of my guesses. Uh, Chris didn't say who one, <laughs> one was. Uh, so maybe that's her. Uh, maybe it was somebody that will remain a mystery, but we do. We're excited to have Katie Surgery Jeff. You won last Look, time you were on this, weren't you? Laughing. Didn't you? <laughs> no, you? I didn't. No, absolutely not. 100% no. Mm. Well, <laughs> so does my memory. My, <laughs> my memory also <laughs> lost. I got two points last time. She does. Mm. Okay. Hey, you guys know that. Uh, it's a new that little... Double points. Point, 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 I forgot to tell you guys that uh, I am soon to be a captain, my friends. You could be all my seamen. Well, that's right. oh. well, I don't want to be a seaman, but mm. I will uh, ride your boat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Lyle's uh, got you're a boat. getting a boat? You didn't, see the, you, you didn't see the picture? Man, I'm getting gifted a, a old Boston whaler from 1977. Sounds like a sex thing. Totally the, the rape whaler. The rape whaler. And, and it's, 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 it's going to be a little polisher, a little turd to polish, but it's going to look good when it's finished. Well, <laughs> that's for sure. Got an old style bimini top. That's See awesome. the the story how those uh, Boston whalers came about was in Vietnam. There was a guy commissioned to make a boat that was functional to run around the canals up and you know there in the war. And uh, I was talking to my dad about it. He was like, "Yeah, we had three of them in our platoon, and so they used to truck people up the river, you know, to different waypoints and whatnot. So that's how they generally were um, built. Hmm. Um, and then they became available to the public." Well, and I can't wait to go out and sunbathe one's... nude up on that beehive lake. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Hey, whole front deck, Toast baby. up them boys. Very nice. <laughs> we can fish. That's mainly to go fishing. Use sunscreen. <laughs> it's chill, mainly chill to go fishing, sure. Enemies. Sure, mainly, but uh, not so. <laughs> but we can get our wiener stand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll bring my own bait. I'll bring my own hey, tackle, you know as they say. say. <laughs> you know what they say. The bigger the bait, the bigger the fish. Mm -hmm. you know? That's what I'm saying. We're going to catch us some crawfish. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Okay, uh, let's do this, Christopher. What do you have for us for the 100th episode, Weird Triv? You know, I just uh, noticed I have a small error in my first question. Talk amongst yourselves while I do some quick editing. Uh, Lyle, how fast <laughs> of a motor can you put on that kind of boat? It's actually an outboard, so it's not an inboard motor. Mm. It's an outboard. Uh, I can't remember what size it is, but it, it goes about like 45. Yeah. That's too much. But you know, you don't really want to go Yeah, you wouldn't. Fast. <laughs> not for fishing. But uh, uh, I just actually picked up a trolling motor, a kicker motor, what they call. Yeah. Uh, isn't it eight, That's all, that was always more my speed anyway. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, like it's cruise. <laughs> well, for trolling, you know, you, you set mm -hmm. your bait out. You just set that baby go. Like, and I'm just, in no hurry. Fish got their schedule and I got mine. <laughs> oh, it's going to be good. I'm going to enjoy yeah. the shit out. I think it's you awesome. You know, I'm ready here, but uh, in order for me to begin, I gosh, what's something supposed to happen? Oh, There's sake. something that's supposed to fuck. It. Oh, that's right, my fucking theme song. God, I have I ever theme like the, aside from like the very first couple that's of episodes that I had it. I don't think I've ever even had the email queue. That's I got it in my email. <laughs> cue that up, Ron. I can never remember <laughs> how to fucking get to it quickly. Ron, especially under the press. Wake up. Make Ron sound good. Oh, I think I found it right away. Oh, no. See, it. I, that's this weird one that's um, theme. And I will. See, this is why people that. like listen to us and like us. Because <laughs> we're idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, they're Can dumb like me. Like, yep. <laughs> that's me. I'm them people. Okay, here we go. You ready for this? Ready. Should have had this for it's a weird trivia. That might include any money. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. If not, <laughs> if not tonight, then when, Lord? Yeah. Okay. A matter of if. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to play in traditional order. Uh, Katie, Sir Jerry, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. And more importantly, thanks for being with us on this wacky ride for so long. I'm going to uh, have sure. me on your special anniversary episode. How many years you been yeah, listening? This is the, uh, yeah, too many. I don't know, a million. Hmm. Yeah. Feels like well, since the beginning, I think, for a long Here's time. Him. I'm going to send you a picture of that boat. Uh, it's the same year and make, but it's not cool. a boat. But it will yeah. look like that. Oh. Yeah. And you're just going to have to I'm imagine me laying nude on it. <laughs> right on the deck. Right there. Oh, every oh, you, oh, see and you can, can't, can't you? Right where the dog is. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> kennel up, Ron. Room for a kennel up front. <laughs> Nude Ron Stern it's back. Up. We call that the bow uh, okay. wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, he's, he's a devil. Come on, bow wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, okay. You guys ready for this? <laughs> Let's do it. Do, 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 do. Bow wow wow. Bow wow wow. Question one. Coffee. Let's fucking talk about it. Everybody loves a little caffeine boost, but did you know uh, that one of the following statements about caffeine consumption is true? The rest I have made up. <laughs> I like that you went Midwestern right. there for a second. That was weird. Caffeine. Yeah, that's fine. Just slipped into it and fucking mm -hmm. went with it. All right. All right. Uh, one of these things is true. The rest I made up. A, caffeine can be as addictive as heroin. Yes. Oh, I believe Wait. it. Wait. turn. Okay. B. <laughs> Oh. Caffeine will actually caffeinate your semen. Ooh. <laughs> Does that mean your semen will get up before you do? Yeah. yeah. Well, does that mean that they can swim a little further, best, a little quicker? The best part of waking up. <laughs> room. Sleep for jars. Is in your cup. Hey, keep your out of can my... I get a little creamer, Ron? Just a, <laughs> a little <dip>. Coming. <laughs> oh, no. oh, good cover. Just the tip. <laughs> under uh see under the right circumstances caffeine can generate a small amount of electricity oh dude that's fucking awesome oh is it so there's a d could you uh, under the right circumstances caffeine can generate a small amount of electricity hmm. i feel like that's the curse of bioshock you know <laughs> they, they just drank too much coffee and so they have lightning yeah. on their hands <laughs> great <laughs> or is it d and this is fucking weird because uh, we've talked about semen and we've talked about this too tonight. Caffeine acts as a super nutrient to most plants. 
Mm. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? Oh, well, I'll save it. Yeah. Save it Again. for the anal aisles. Yeah, please. One of these is true. The rest I made up. Again, coffee, caffeine. Caffeine can be ad- addictive as heroin, can be as addictive as heroin, excuse me. B, caffeine will caffeinate your semen when you consume it. Under the right circumstances, caffeine can generate a small amount of electricity or caffeine acts as a super nutrient to most plants. Ronster, where are you going to go with this one? I'm curious. Well, I, I was pretty firm on A because I, I, I'm a one – I drink a strong mug of coffee, but I only mm-hmm. have one a day. Um, but I know people that drink that shit all the time. But even my mom, if she goes – a day without the right amount of caffeine. She gets like caffeine headaches. Like, yeah, I know that people get withdrawals. Uh, uh, it's a serious drug. And I know that. And, but I also, there's something in my head about coffee. I, I feel like I grew up seeing people put coffee grounds as part of compost. But then I'm thinking maybe. <sighs> Is coffee, is coffee one of those things that you're not? Maybe it's in my head because coffee is one of those things that you should not put in a compost. I don't know. I think I'm going to go. Or is it E, Eddie Money, whose favorite drink was coffee? <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> I've got two creamers for coffee time. Um, I I think I'm going to go with D. I am tempted, just a little tempted, to go after the jizz herring of B. <laughs> because I love the idea of some jacked up <laughs> swimmers. That, but that brings up an interesting point. I would love to hear. There's, there's got to be a study on the effect of your active jizz, your swimmers, if you will, on all sorts of substances. Like, does speed make them swim faster, <laughs> <Kinda> harder? Like, <laughs> does heroin like slow them on down? Kind of like the spider one. Does booze the make them conk into each other's noggins? <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you three <laughs> times. Well, I'll finish your thought there. Oh, you remember that? That uh, it was a video about a spider, and they they jacked oh, yeah. him up on all different kind of things. <laughs> He's like, and a spider on alcohol, and his web was like all <laughs> fucked up, all like janky. <laughs> yeah, you remember? You remember? I remember spider that. Yeah. LSD. Uh, Shit's funny. It was good. Cute spider. John Mark. I'm going with the uh, the plant super nutrient one. D, so D. Following Ron. Yeah, yeah, D. And John Mark. I see you. I see you. I feel like I've seen Uh, that in compost. Mm -hmm. Lyle. Yeah, that's where I was going to go with. But I was going to say, I'm not necessarily, well, you never know because, like, uh, I'm not really in a a consumer of my own. (laughs) You just had three conversations with yourself. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's in, been in real lonely here. One single sentence. Triple conversation. <laughs> real lonely. Well, I was going to say, actually, I'm triple, not sure. Triple, well, triple no, conversation. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. Sorry, finish your thoughts. I've, 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 <laughs> finish your three separate I've, thoughts. So, um, no, well, there's, there's always the lore. I'm not sure if it's true or not. It might be about, like, if you eat sweet stuff, you're just as sweet. So, but oh, like true. Uh, pineapple juice, pineapple yeah, yeah. coffee, and veggies. Huh? Coffee though is a diuretic, mm-hmm. and it's a more dehydrator. So I wouldn't think it would like you know. That's why I could drink it because mm. I'm like it. You know. That's true. That could viscous up your jizz and slow down the swimmers. Yeah, so, uh, jizzcus. <laughs> you don't want to get all jizzcus. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I was, there you <laughs> thought I was going to come on your tits. I barely made it to your navel. Right. It must be jiscus. <laughs> My jiscus must be acting up. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, there is a, a theory to the what the the D is, um, and it's big, big theory. Oh. It's uh, so so. What you do is um, you mix in coffee grounds. You use coffee grounds. Uh, into your garden, but what it is is mainly um, for most bit people. Um, it's to um, to imply for more worms. You can dig worms out of your garden. <clears throat> worms love it. They just like freak out because they get all high yourself. on coffee. And so um, that, that's that's what the old lore was: is you mm. use the old grounds in your garden to just to produce more worms. But. Um, Who's to say? Maybe it uh, and makes your plants grow better, too. So I'm just going to go with D. All right. Well, you have a very interesting choice here, Miss, Mrs. Sorry, Surgery Jeff. Uh, 
safe bet to go with us can't lose but you could pull ahead from all of us <laughs> if you uh, know otherwise get the right you know as much as i love the idea that it can generate like electricity or some shit like that um <laughs> that one i wasn't tempted that. to go with it all oddly enough <laughs> I, I just think it's kind of an adorable answer and it's like oh chris you did that <laughs> <laughs> you know i have paid dearly Listen. for thinking that way <laughs> yeah I don't know. There's there's that's right water all over my room Listen, they can't all be home runs <laughs> they can't all be eddie monies but I am also going to go with D because I, I do believe that I have heard that before. And if not, good for you, Mr. Hart. Yeah. And right. if not, safe bet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, as this was a grim and pleasant episode, uh, it's fitting that question two is a bit more on the grim side. Buckle up. This was a statistic that was sent over to me by someone that I've been holding on to for a bit. But it's an interesting one. Uh a sad and stunning statistic here. By far, what is the leading cause of death in pregnant women? By far, what is the leading cause of death in pregnant women? Is it A, placental disorders and or pregnancy complications? Mm -hmm. Is it B, asphyxiation? Oops. For the Oops. mother or for the baby? On the umbilical cords. I the guess, yes. Something. At that, yeah. Well, for the mother. For the mother. So oh. the mother. Yeah, what is the leading cause of <laughs> death of pregnant women? Okay. Okay. Right. Is it C, misadventure? Oh yeah, I I did miss here. <laughs> I did miss here the question. Pregnant women. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Death yeah. by misadventure. That old weird, <laughs> <laughs> yet somehow enviable way to go. <laughs> okay. Or is it D, homicide? Boy, he did go grim. It's um, grim. It's like, but it's an interesting statistic, and it's by far, it's like uh, by the by far leading cause. Okay, so placenta. Uh, placenta in other words, just like like typical birth, mm -hmm. pregnancy uh, complications. Yeah, basically. pregnancy complications or strangulation. You did well, say strangulations, said... asphyxiation. That is different. Misadventure <sighs> or homicide. This is interesting. I'm just keeping in the theme of the show. No other reason. I'm going to go with homicide. I have no reason to believe that. But, uh, well, I got no guesses. Okay. I'm going to put you down for homicide, Roster. <laughs> I'm going to put you down for a homicide, Roster. Yeah. Uh, hey, pencil me in. <laughs> anyway, we'll see, if, we'll see how the day shapes out. John Mark. Yeah, I think I'm going to also go with the darkest one that I, I think is the dark, darkest one. And uh, is homicide. Put you down for T as well. I I can only think of uh you know uh, one is like you know shit happens you know like the bleeding and shit happens and sure. you know at birth or even just like miscarriage or something you bleed out. Women's bodies are amazing and complicated. No, yeah. and that shit is scary. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> what are you gonna go with then, Lyle? You going with the? <laughs> Pregnancy uh, complications. Yeah. Still pondering, buddy. <laughs> He's bummed yeah, himself I, out. He's I'm, done. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Number one, A. Going with A. Okay. And Katie, surgery. You went with A. Yeah. Hey, just a, sorry, guys. Quick pause. Got my kids calling for me. Just one sure. sec. BRB. Talk amongst yourselves. Did you guys know that? Uh, I don't know if I ever talked about this on the show, and it's just pretty, I guess, TMI. Um, but my mom had a miscarriage. She slipped on some ice. Um, this must have been circa 1984, 83 or oh, 84. Oh. She slipped on some ice. And I don't remember how far along she was. She wasn't too far, but she was far enough to know that it was a girl. Um, and yeah, lost the baby. Really traumatic experience, of course. But from time to time, that hits That's me. Crazy. That hits me every now and again that I would have a younger sister. Little sister, yeah. If it wasn't for just a little fucking patch of ice. Well, you've seen me. <laughs> you know my little sister, so maybe it's a blessing. <laughs> blessing and a curse. I would have yeah, no. I would have adored to have a younger sister. I'm my older we talked about it all the time. I love my brother now and he's a good guy, but he was not a of a good older brother. He was by the yeah. time I was in high school, you know. He was when, a, he, when he stopped hanging you from your undies on the face. Yeah, fence. by the time he stopped he was he was a fucker, you know. He he uh -huh. could have very easily turned me into a serial killer. He was sadistic. <laughs> and, still time. I would have taken all of that and used, I just know me. I would have, 
uh, bonded with my little sister, and I just I know that I would have loved her uh, a lot. So it bums me out, and uh, like I feel that loss in a in a strange way. <clears throat> and Did you I was, have a little sister at one point? Oh, you might have been gone when I said it. No, my mom had a miscarriage. Mm. I must have been eight. So yeah, she she wouldn't be uh, all that much younger than me. Yeah, and that's tough. Mm-hmm. And I think about yeah. The weird thing is that I think about it from time to time. Mm-hmm. Like I understand my mom going. You know, th- that's a part of her forever. You know, that's a part of her story forever. Oh. I was just a little, little kid, and I kind of understood it. Kind of didn't. I was like, well, you know, she. It just is what it is. But every now and again, I think about it, it's like, huh, I feel robbed of a little sister. And I, I like to imagine how that would have been. I know. I would have been a fucker every now and again, sure. <laughs> just like mm-hmm. adult Ronnie mm-hmm. is. But I think I would have been a really good older brother. Totally, man. And a good middle child. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lyle, I'm not sure I got your answer on that. It was A. A? Placenta disorders and or We have been super dark, super heavy, and super yeah. wacky tonight. I love it because it's 100 and it represents everything this show ever that's was true. and ever will be. Yeah, that's the truth. I think oh, most of the people map. that like our shows enjoy the macabre, you know. Yeah. You can swing any is. which way, any well, which it's, time. It's so crazy because, like, we started this, like, when I had cancer. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. how so bizarre. We were. Yeah. We when, were we, gonna when we left uh, Tales in the Space Bud, you had just found out. Yeah, we yeah. were gonna end it all together, yeah. and then it's just right. Yeah. 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 It's so weird. Uh, Katie. Well, I am very into all like the murdery podcasts and stuff, um, mm-hmm. and I often find listening to them that pregnancy becomes a motive for murder. So I'm gonna go with homicide as well. Wow! All right, almost almost a family game. This could get interesting. Where Lyle went out on his own here. Hmm. All right. Question three is a listener submitted question. Big thank you to the lovely TJ for uh, sending this one over to me. And per use, you can find me on Facebook. You can uh, send them to Christopher.Bazaar at gmail.com. Whatever you got to do, get those wacky shits over to me. Okay. A 46-year-old man from the UK is suing a market after he ate a ham sandwich in 2017 that made him sick and put him in the hospital. Uh, While he recovered from his illness... For the past five fucking years, he has suffered from this anomaly, which he claims is a byproduct of his adventure with the ham sandwich. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's suing them for $350,000. What is the abnormal condition he now suffers from ever since he ate that fucking ham sandwich? Is it A, constant farting? (laughs) Not my favorite Katie Lang song. (laughs) (laughs) Constant, you know I gotta sing it. You know I gotta. Constant farting, and now that will be in your head for a month. Perfect. You cannot get that song out of your head once it's in. Uh, you know you're all gonna have to pick that absolutely now because of that song. All right, <laughs> or maybe you should do every one of these in some kind of song. <laughs> That's always dumb. I'll try. Uh, B color blindness. No, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Blinded by the sandwich. Yeah, (laughs) you're back in. I'm in. I'm back in. Uh, Is it C, he's entirely lost his sense of taste and smell? (laughs) (laughs) If I can taste or smell you by now. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> right, it can't be gems. You will <laughs> never, never, never be smelled or tasted. <laughs> it's getting better. <clears throat> that sounds like shit we used to write back. Let's finish, <laughs> let's finish strong with D. His sweat always smells like ham. <laughs> Hammy Sam. <laughs> It's working on the ham sweats. Ding, ding. <laughs> Gotta smell you won't forget. Ding, ding. <laughs> Only a few people out there will know that song, but it's a hit. He's got Seeger uh, soothed. <laughs> again, really Holy quick. shit. What a but, uh, choice. Yeah. Two points on the line here, so it's fucking focus. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a quick recap here. A uh, 46-year-old man from the U.K. is suing a market after he ate a ham sandwich that put him in the hospital. 
And for the past five years after that, he suffered from this, which he claims is a byproduct of his mis- his misadventure with the ham sandwich. He's suing for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. He may actually fucking get it. What is happening? Is he farting, colorblind, lost his taste and smell, or his sweat always smells like ham? What's it gonna be, Ron? <sighs> I <laughs> I think I got to go with the best song that I came up with, and that was the OG, KD. Uh, KD Lang, <laughs> Constant Farting. Uh, Const- only, I'm only, I would, I'm, I'm tempted to go with Ham Sweat because that also, <laughs> that not only sounds like something I would like to climb into after a long day of working, but I kind of want to smell someone sweating <laughs> of ham. Uh, we know that sometimes you can sweat smelling of onions, right? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, garlic. You put somebody <laughs> ham sweating of it's ham like next to, to that. You're like, oh, man, with you. we're halfway. We're we need some pineapple here, and we got ourselves a Hawaiian pizza pie right here. <laughs> You're like I'm back at the bodies exhibit with you. This is bizarre. <laughs> How bizarre. <laughs> we did talk How about cannibalism. Bizarre. Oh, that's higher. Now I'm gonna go with farting, uh, and the reason I am is because this is a listener submitted question, and I always got to keep that in mind. I forget this. I forget to play that game. Um, doesn't always work for me when I do remember, but <clears throat> I'm going to say that maybe TJ came across a fart related lawsuit and sent it mm. our way. And you Fucking. said he, he might get it, huh? Yeah, it's possible. You never know, kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, especially if you have a lawyer in the family, yeah, go after it. Good luck. Totally. <laughs> John Mark. No. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say colorblind and I have, I have no reason yeah, to like say that, that, but I like that one. Eh, I just, I don't know. Makes sense to me. Everything is well, ham pink. <laughs> 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 Whatever it is. I think I see becomes a slice of ham to me. Now we are back in the bodies. Exhibit. That, was, that was the ronster <laughs> frolicking through the bodies. Exhibit. <laughs> Taking a bite out of this, a lick from that. You were sweating <laughs> and you looked hungry. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, gonna. Uh, yeah. I think the only thing that I could ever think of, like a, you know, like a poultry that I would like, it would be bacteria. It would be some kind of like a bacteria. <laughs> you say poultry infection or something like that. <laughs> but poultry? Oh, sorry. I'm in like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I'm hands like grow wings. <laughs> yeah, pork. Uh, so I'm gonna go with farts because that's like, uh, you know, when you get a bacterial infection, like stuff like that, it mm-hmm. tries to push it out so you'd Get be like intestines. or something yeah. no i'm really mm-hmm. curious okay. what the answer yeah, is here mm-hmm. katie <laughs> i am also going to go with the poop herring here and mm-hmm. take the farts um <laughs> i think of any ridiculous lawsuit that would be the hardest to prove what the source is and so they might just give them the money just to make them go away so. right. <laughs> like do we want to sit in the courtroom watching this man fart into a microphone and smelling no, no, those no. ham farts we don't want to go there honey we don't want to go there that's where that, <laughs> it's like, oh, fart sandwich. Please, i've ignored every other letter of jury duty notice i've ever gotten in my entire life please lord let this one come in my mail <laughs> go and RSV. here's the well, case we all been to a concert i've got I've got a friend. <laughs> we all been to concerts and like packs and stuff like that and Comic Con and stuff like that. And I would have gave a million dollars for somebody to just smell like a fucking ham versus how Oh yeah, that. you wish they smelled like <laughs> ham. Mm. <laughs> Could be a blessing in disguise for that man. That is a peculiar funk. There's no funk like Comic Con funk. Oh no funk. No funk. So where are you going? Uh, okay. where, where did you go out? Oh, you went with uh, the Oh, we all went with ham except for John Mark. Yeah, right? yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. ham. Yeah. Yeah, fart. <laughs> Farts. Good lord. We're all with ham, Good thing right? we're almost done here. Uh, okay, question four. Uh, a chess plane robot recently made the news uh, at a bis. Uh, nope. <clears throat> <laughs> at a Make big it sound sure, good, Ron. Ron. Sure, sure will <laughs> wake up. Yeah, <laughs> splice this out. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. At a big chess tournament in Russia, a nine-year-old prodigy bellied up to a chess table with the robot uh, and started to play a match there. After the robot made a move, the boy, who is a top ten chess player in his age bracket, made his own move. In response to this, the robot did this. Was it A? Caught fire and exploded. <laughs> Not Check and made. Not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Every time. It's not 
Let it be. Flipped the chess table over oh, in anger. I love that. The reality show version. Mm hmm. Is C started asking the child personal questions like where he lives and what time he goes to bed usually? Oh, no. <laughs> That's weird. Mm. Or D reached across the table and broke the child's finger. <laughs> oh. Uh, there is video of this thing too, but it's very difficult to make out exactly what's happening of this whole uh, one of these things, so I didn't bring it. But uh, this is a real thing. Oh, Again, nine-year-old prodigy bellied up to play a game of chess with a robot, uh, made a move, and the robot did this. Again, caught on fire and exploded, flipped the chess table over, started asking the child personal questions, or reached across the table and broke the child's finger. Ronster. Oh, I was a firm flip the table. You know how that's my thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I love a good that's table that's flipping. That's I'm always threatening to do it. Yeah. Until I heard the break in the finger. <laughs> that's a story right there. Um... <laughs> I think I'm going to stick. Oh, boy. Now, I'm going to go with breaking the finger. I'm going to say that that is. Oh, I love the fact that he burst out in flame. This is hard. Yeah, I'm torn between B and D, but I think I'm going to go with D. Okay. Just from a sensational headline type thing. We we love us a robot's gone berserk story. And that, uh, I, I would kind of, kind of like to watch that video. Not, not that I want to see a kid's finger get broke, but I'd also like to see a robot flipping a tape. I'm going to go with D. <laughs> Ooh, can you imagine a robot breaking your finger? Dude, I can. <laughs> uh, okay. John Mark. I was trying to come up with this whole version of the um, laundry note as if it was written by the robot that <laughs> did something. After this kid made a move, mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't quite get there to where I feel like I should say anything about it. So I'm going to go with the finger breaking. <laughs> finger breaker. I appreciate the effort and the restraint. <laughs> <laughs> it was there. The seed was the, the kernel was there. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Usually is. Uh, Lyle. Hello. 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 How do I do that? Huh? Hello. Okay, so I got to go like this, like that. Like this, right? and uh, just your penis in the mouth again. What's happening? Hello, how? Let me see. Should I move my queen to your brook? <laughs> <laughs> Snap your finger. Say brook? <laughs> eh, whatever. You know, this must be funny. Fair. But, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that was on the spot. Queen yeah, to Brooke, Brooke. Queen <laughs> to Brooke would make him burst into flame if he got Well, that. it's not even it that. It's like how. I'm trying to remember the movie How, where there was a big old red button that used to talk. You mean 2001? I can't do that, Dave. A space Odyssey. How? No, it's called How, John Mark. <laughs> oh. It I is. Some respect to the classics. How, how 9000. <laughs> well, you know, uh, TJ posted a And hilarious, How Talks to Dave. TJ posted a hilarious meme that was the red eye of How, and then Hollow Notes, and the caption was, I'm afraid I can't go for that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed a long time. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lyle. Lyle I cut you off. Where you did, did you did you say you're going with finger, Lyle? <laughs> breaking the breaking the finger, breaking the finger. This is an right. interesting Dang. game. It all comes down to this. Largely, no pressure. The same way. <laughs> I kind of love the idea of it bursting in flames and exploding, but that mm -hmm. seems like an old Simpsons joke or something. And not. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I think I did. That's almost happened. exactly what I saw in my <laughs> head. <when> <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go with flipping the table because I think uh, it's yes. just kind of fun to think that he was programmed with a little bit of asshole in him. It is his butthole shit. <laughs> <laughs> pieces flying everywhere. You fucking cheated. He goes running out of the room with his arms flailing behind him. <laughs> bottle of shit. 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 That's not the <laughs> That'll make you all pay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> you tallying up my score over there, Chris? Yeah, I am tallying up the scores here. Uh, let's go over the answers, see what happened. Uh, question one, caffeine. One of the following statements about caffeine was true. The one that was true was that caffeine will caffeinate your fucking semen, motherfuckers. <laughs> no. Oh, damn. <laughs> what? About it. Mom drinks liquor. 
the baby's gonna get a little drunk if uh, mm-hmm. you know you got these fucking organisms in your body. I don't know if there's an organ in there. Fascinating. So is this a good thing? Does it make them work harder? Swim further? Do they sleep? They might not sleep. <sighs> I'm sorry. Last I need to long. pause for a sec, guys. <laughs> Just a sec. Sure. <laughs> Do they have longer tails? Yeah, I need. Do they bump into each other? Boop, 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 boop. Oh my god! Yeah, I think what if that they're like more fucking draw. super smart? What if what if your sperm helped like put on fucking uh, scientist suits and they fucking swam around and did algebra? <laughs> <laughs> did algebra before they came out and then they came out dumb. Well, that would be adorable. That would be very advanced. I would be very amazed. I was happy just to look at my middle age jizz under a microscope and see him moving. <laughs> <laughs> Talked about that on the show. That was almost Those like a spiritual cobwebs. experience. I got to be honest. It was, uh, at first I wasn't seeing nothing. Then I was like, ah, it's just a cheap kid's toy microscope. And that then worked. I saw one. I was like, wait, we got a flipper. And then, <laughs> yeah, Sarah and I both looked. We don't, we have no idea if it just took our eyes a minute to adjust or sure. if the, the viscosity uh-huh. of the uh, <laughs> sample had to break down in a certain way before you could see it clearly. Uh, all of a sudden, it, I was looking at a shit ton of my boys just down there swimming. It was did they all have like amazing? Uh, it's like I could, I got kid, I got yeah. kid making stuff still. I mean, I'm not that old, but you, you don't know until you know. Say again, that'd be fun. Little uh, uh, semen with little pork chops and glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the booze? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. Where's the, where do I go? <laughs> you girls looking to party or what store? Where's that uh, pussy? <laughs> God, that'd be fucking comical as hell. No, I'm telling it, you. It's it, the, I, it'd I, be I, like the Smurfs. You know, like the, you know, there's all so many Smurfs, but they're all the same. So uh, it'd be like that. <laughs> well, there was only one Papa and only one Smurfette. Mm. And they all looked a little like her mom. Um, yeah, no, I highly recommend... And if you have a Jizzle. microscope, <laughs> jizzing, <laughs> jizzing into a slide and checking it out, it 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 changed my life. It was an odd and uh, <laughs> silly, but somehow <laughs> beautiful experience. Fuck. Like, why not? Sorry, my my kid was having a meltdown for a. Speaking of jizz, he saw a he saw a flying bug. B. <laughs> he ran out of water. C. He had to go to the bathroom. I'm kidding. But one of those was actually fucking D. Cool. All the above. I'm saying bug. What do you think? <laughs> It was bug. Yeah, he saw a flying bug. <laughs> fucking lost his mind. That's Full on pretty, sobbing. Pretty beautiful. <laughs> oh, no. oh, he was terrified there, of like, it. Okay. I was like looking at. It. Sometimes, sometimes we have a fly or something, man. It's no big deal. Oh, and he's like, it flew, and I'm like, and he's standing up crying. I'm like, I don't see any bugs, buddy. And just as I said that, the spider crawls up like near oh, his no. head breast. I'm like, and I just snatched it in my hand. And I was like, oh, good for you. Nice good, 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 daddy. <laughs> that was good, daddy. I just father is a liar. <laughs> There are no <laughs> bugs. Ah, you summoned that. <laughs> oh, there's a lion witch. The second I told him that, I see the spider crawl up his fucking headrest in his bed. I was like, oh, what the fucking just, odds of that? I, didn't see it. I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. When uh, I was in dialysis this morning, dude, I'm sitting there uh, and about an hour cool. and a half in. And I'm, I was looking through, you know, like Facebook Marketplace, whatever, just browsing. It's kind of like, you know, it's easy to do. I'm kind of addicted to it. It's almost like uh, yard selling, but by your phone. And I just look at shit. And I look up from my phone, and there's this fucking spider, dude. And it's like crawling, crawling closer to me, uh, but in between the two seats. Like there's me, and then there's somebody to the, the right of, or the left of me. And this fucking thing was, it was a pretty good size, like a, you know, like a half dollar or a dollar coin, big, mm, big, guy. Wow. He's a big guy. And he was crawling and I was like, Oh no. And he just stopped and, and you could tell he was like trying to figure out which way to go. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I kind of leaned forward. I got needles in my arm. I can't move my arm. And I, I roll <laughs> with my free arm. I reached down to grab my duffel bag. And I was just to get about ready to swing me on that fucker just to see if I could get the, you know, smash it. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the nurses came by and I was like, hey, Scott, let me borrow your foot for a second. And he goes, what do you mean? And I pointed at the spider and go, oh, shit. <laughs> and he fucking, you know, squashed it. But I was like, poor little spider. It could have been dangerous. Yeah. I, I was scared well, to swing on it. Are dangerous around here. If, <laughs> if you could have got away. Who knows where he would have went? He could have got behind my chair. And they're, they're dangerous like, because they can give people heart attacks. <laughs> yeah, no do. shit. Fuck spiders. Especially one that big. <clears throat> okay, where are we at? 
Okay, nobody got question one correct because nobody could guess that your jizz could get caffeinated. <laughs> caffeinated jizz. I'll be thinking about that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, question two again was a unknown. Uh, I'm sorry, that's question three. Question two was our grim question. Uh, uh, number one cause of death in pregnant women is indeed homicide, like oh, by far. And uh, just like there's a lot of homicides that tend to happen with uh, high stress situations. And as Katie mentioned, she has listened to a lot of uh, true crime pod podcasts. And well, even like uh, Jerry Springer, you know, you're not the dad. What? I'm not the dad. And so, just, oh, I'm that's more shit. Oh yeah, more <laughs> yeah. That was mine. <clears throat> uh, Ron, John, Mark, and Katie got that correct, so I'm putting a point of pop on their little town here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant women getting murdered. Question three our, was our listener submitted question worth how many points, Lyle? Uh, it was a double or triple. <laughs> <laughs> you should say that exact thing in that exact tone and triple it. <laughs> was it double or triple? I didn't know what would happen, but I knew it would be good. You know what? Fuck it. Question for three points now, because Lyle did such a fucking... Excellent. Okay. was on 100. A 46-year-old man in the UK is suing a market after he ate a ham Sammy in 2017 that made him not feel so great, had to go to the hospital. Uh, when he re recovered, though, ever since then, every single day, every single hour, every single moment, he has fucking gas. He's farting eternally. <laughs> Yeah, it's a constant stream of gas. And the the hospital was like, well, you had E. coli. And he's like, I didn't have E. coli. They ran the test. There's no E. coli. Something, something happened. So um, trying to get a little money out of that. He may have a case. We don't know. Ooh, constant that, that could be a social. I mean, you can't live a normal life if you are constantly farting. No, no you can't. You Although should, at you some won't. point, if you can control the noise, at some point you have to run clear. Right. Right. We all, because <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's like there's the fart that you you let off at the end of the road trip when you didn't want to fart in front of your buddies and you've been in a car for three and a half hours and it's like righteous and righteous. Mm -hmm. And then there's the fart that, uh, you know, it's maybe nine or ten down from that fart later on in the <laughs> evening. It's not nearly <laughs> as pun. I mean, you, what you're is that scale out. called? It's, you know, it'd be, you'd be terrifying. The sphincter scale. It's the <laughs> from, from one to nine. You know, be, you know, it'd be terrifying and like just the worstest thing ever to happen to somebody is to have diarrhea and like have diarrhea every hour. Did you you seriously you couldn't imagine? live a normal life doing that? Well, oh. that's IBS. I mean, the, people live with that that kind of shit. Crohn's. There's all sorts of stuff that people have to. They can never be too far away from a bathroom. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, if they can prove, how do you prove? That this was connected, I guess, is that's oh, the court, yeah. that's the trial. That yeah, I wish I was started, getting a jury it summons. The, the day after he was, uh, started immediately for him. So that's what he How says, much is so. he asking for? Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Mm, he should be that's going higher. Enough. That's not life changing money. He could buy yeah, a house got... in, a, yeah. in certain parts of town. He definitely get a new car. Mm -hmm. You know what he should uh, do? He should be going higher. <clears throat> he should. He should join the circus and have his own show. <laughs> the amazing where he lights his no. Where he lights his farts. <laughs> and that's the, 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 the only... human blowtorch. <laughs> yeah, and he just sits there and lights his Always farts. ready. And <laughs> Always a like, gas. The eternal light of my ass continues to shine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, we're gaslighting you, Lyle. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make it's not bad. Gaslighting. <laughs> I'll go now and eat my dinner. I'll <laughs> see you later next week. <laughs> As I enjoyed the emotional. Rough, but Lyle's, Lyle's got a point. Fucking capitalize on that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're, you like, do, you're if living you, it. Like an orchestra behind it. <laughs> Where he's lighting the parts the whole time. That's amazing. I'd, I'd pay to see. <laughs> That's amazing. That's just like, good entertainment. It's like going to one of those fucking Christmas light displays that syncs up to the music. It sounds like, <laughs> like, like white orchestra is playing. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Uh, with fire, but with fire. Yeah. yeah flames. Uh, Ron, Lyle, Dangerous. and Katie got that question correct, giving them three See points a point. of pop. Ron's Next at four. Time, John Mark is at one. No, Lyle's at three. Katie's at Mark. four. Anything's possible except for John Mark. Thanks to that. Maybe that three point. Thank you, Lyle. <laughs> You're welcome. 
three triple points. Mm -hmm. Okay, question four. A chess playing robot recently made the news when at a big chess tournament in Russia, a nine-year-old boy prodigy was playing him, uh, made a move, and the robot reached over and broke his fucking finger. (laughs) Uh, To be fair, the kid... Moved. The kid moved quicker than he should have, apparently, was the thing. Like, the robot wasn't finished <laughs> making his move, and the kid was like, checkmate! He tried to fucking move in there, and the robot malfunctioned and just reached over and grabbed it, thinking maybe he was grabbing a piece, piece or something. Yeah. And the oh. fucking just cranked at his finger. Poor kid, now but, uh, he's being blamed uh, yeah. for it. You no, know, um, but you know the kid. The, t- the kid did go on to uh, actually. Um, he was fine. He, he had his finger was broken, and he went on to play in the tournament the next day and stuff. So, but the parents are looking into legal repercussions, obviously. Oh, sure. Yeah, for sure. I gotta see this footage. Okay. Uh, this, there is footage available, but like I said, it's kind of blurred. It's hard to see, but you see the fucking. It's, it's hard to see because the robots in the front and the kid. You're looking from the kid's back. I don't like, care. I still want to see kids get this fucking arm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Ron, John, Mark, okay. and Lyle got that correct. Oh my Making God! This Ron is... our fucking winner. Oh, I'm sorry. I interrupted you watching this thing. He's but... watching porn. I was well. Go. I was imagining like a whole robot. It is just a fucking the kind of arm that you would see in like a. Uh... Yeah. Ooh. You can see him wriggling, trying to wriggle out of it. <laughs> of course, someone put the thumbnail as the T2. Um, holy shit! I'm back in it. <laughs> back in it to win it. <clears> That's <throat> wrong. On the hundred. All it took was some women, <laughs> pregnant women dying, little children <laughs> having their fingers broken by robots, and what? a man being really cursed with eternal tonight, farts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well done, sir. It's a magical You're back. night. The king has returned. 100. Mm-hmm. Oh, King's back at 100. That's good. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, keeping trucking along with us all these episodes and continuing with us. You know the game at this point, and uh, you like it, and we love you for liking it. And thank you so much, Katie Surgery Jeff, for joining us. And once again, thank you losing. For yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll get you back. In not too distant yeah, yeah. future, and you can I'll we'll, put we'll, you in the rotation. Might be kind of fun to have a championship round of all the losers <laughs> and all the Someone's guests. Win, like we it. don't play. Like we're just we just maybe we weigh in maybe we can analyze that'd be kind of a fun twist to do on news Hmm. or weird triv in the future we get just the listeners on i like the idea of it just being everyone that's been on but lost they come on we get how would that work we get three of them you know and then you know then uh all of us me then john martin lyle can analyze we can weigh in and they yeah. can use that information however they see fit, but ultimately choose the way they want. To find a kind of twist. We'll have like yeah. uh, like John John Mark with all the scientific stuff. You could be all the grim stuff, and like could be all the positive stuff. And then so like the question would be, you know, <laughs> it's interesting and, how we see ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I can call in a Lyle lifeline. I do bring oh, the grim. God, yeah. I'll call in an Anna Lyles. His Anna is uh, yeah. not often off the mark. Yeah. And even when it is, it still makes a kind of sense, you know? And it's always enjoyable. Well, that's why it would be fun to see how you all would answer yeah. after hearing us <laughs> sort of talking out loud as if we're going to answer, but not necessarily answer. weighing in. We, you know, we'll try it. Might work, might not. <clears throat> Anywho, that would be down the line. We'd have to do a practice episode. Yeah, and we're and record it and release it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The that whole did. thing has been 450 yeah, practice episodes, and that's what we've each done. one of them is what it is. But uh, yeah, all right, y'all. Know. Well, let's get on out of here. Next week, we're going to be talking about some 9/11, and uh, what better way to kick off the next 450 episodes? Huh? <laughs> See, I'll be I'll off, be 54. <laughs> No, I'll be older than that. Um, let's see, 12 years from now, I will be, let's see, uh, 50. Oh, fucking math. I'm not going to stop. Mm-hmm. Let's get out of here. 63. I'll be, that's how old you'll be, John Mark? Okay. Yep. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> not a thought. <laughs> that's like, about kicking that's off like stuff, when someone says sure 1933 to 1980 is the same as 1980 to right now. And it's like, mm-hmm. that can't be fucking right. Don't like it. <laughs> but it is. Looking is or something like that. Mm. All right, y'all. Let's get on out of here. Next week, 9-11. Uh, thanks for sharing the episode with your friends and other people with questionable tastes. We appreciate you being part of our uh, ever-growing, slowly-growing family. 
You are our heroes. You are our heroes. And on that note, tune in next week. Good night, guys. Bye, Thanks, y'all. Katie. Thank Bye. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Can we get Bye. one more song? One more of your, uh, your, uh, your crazy hits? Um, I was trying to I was trying remember. to think of something for Katie's surgery, Jeff. Oh. But, oh. Uh, hmm. No. <laughs> Perfect. Nailed it. Well, I, can't, I got Ron, nothing. Fix post. Make no. something amazing. For Katie surgery, yeah. wake up. Make something It'll good. Fully, some respect. Fully produced beatbox coming out of one side of my mouth. Stop watching women, half naked women on TikTok and do something productive. <laughs> You're not my real mom. <laughs> you don't get to be the boss of me. You, I don't think a lot of people actually realize that you are actually a really good beatboxer. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people yeah, don't serious. realize that. <clears throat> World like renowned. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, but we're running long in the tooth, so I won't give yeah. you much of that. Good <laughs> That's all you get right now. Fucking <laughs> 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 sample. Just a sample. <laughs> Just a sample. All right. Uh, guys, is... next week. <laughs> Good night, guys. Bye bye. Clean body. Yeah. Whatever it is, I think I see, becomes a slice of ham to me.